Oh, that Grambling game. Drop the game-winning touchdown pass. There you see the lineup for the Alcorn State Braves as they will start this thing at the 25-yard line in their own territory. McNair is in the shotgun as he loves to operate. There's a snap. McNair drops back. He passes on first down. The pressure is on. McNair dips the doodles out of the pocket. McNair, he's knocked down at about the 24 or 27-yard line. So already we see flashes of McNair scrambling out of the pocket. Well, that's what Jackson State really fears because they feel like if he has to stand in there and wait for receivers to come open, they got a shot. But if they flush him out of this pocket like they did here and lose containment, he is so extremely dangerous here. He's got eyes in the back of his head. Look, oh, he jukes. He, oh, he's just tremendous uh, athletic ability there as he struggles for a uh, short gain. Actually make it nine yards. Second down for Alcorn State operating at the 28-yard line. McNair back to pass. There's the throw. It's too high for Donald Ray Ross. You notice some of the Alcorn players are wearing the uh, purple legging today. That's pulled out in the big games, Rob. You know this is a big one. They don't use the purple legging unless it's huge. You see Hinton has it, Donald Ray Ross has it, and you look at the Jackson State defense, Gavin, Bolton, and Carson, the linebacking core. So already we've seen Steve McNair with two quick passes, or actually attempt two quick passes, one incomplete, one he was flushed out of the pocket, and he had to take off. Third down for the Alcorn Braves. The ball resting at the 28-yard line. McNair operating again out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the left, one to the right, one man in the backfield with McNair. There's a snap. McNair back to pass. Look, he throws. He's got a man. That's Tim McNair, his brother, and it's a first down for the Braves. Well, Tim has been the most reliable uh, guy for all corn in the late season. He's really come on, doing a terrific job, leads the club in catches. And at this point, he and Kobe Jenkins are the uh, most efficient targets for Steve Marcus Hinton, uh, troubled by that uh, banged-up stress fracture on his left leg. Tim McNair once mentioned he didn't want to attend Alcorn. He wanted to attend Mississippi Valley. So he's happy here catching passes from his brother Steve. And took a redshirt season to wait around so Steve would be at his height when he went out at Alcorn. First down for the Braves at the 47-yard line nearing Jackson State territory. McNair again out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the left. Back to pass. McNair. There's the pressure. The throw. It's incomplete and almost picked off by Picasso Nelson of Jackson State. Picasso Nelson leads this club in tackles. He's uh, certainly a great run supporter, but he also uh, can do the interception thing and almost picked that one off there to kill the drive. Alcorn sets up shop once again at the 47-yard line. Alcorn has yet to run the football on this drive. This is the opening drive of the football game. No score. Jackson State and Alcorn. McNair again out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the left. Kobe Jenkins to the right. McNair back to pass. Plenty of time. Looking throws across the middle. It's complete to Kobe Jenkins out of Murrah High School here in Jackson. Kobe's really a guy who's just he's, he's done, come on uh, terrifically in the uh, in the late season kind of a quiet guy doesn't say a lot is is quite animated though when he reaches the end zone uh, came and he and he's fearless he like Tim McNair will come across the middle and catch the ball for you and that's the trait of an outstanding receiver Tony Bullock comes in for all corn now the receivers now move to the right side of the field McNair again in the shotgun still yet to run the football in this drive there he goes with the hand signals as you mentioned Clay yeah, if we only knew what those were, Cardell <laughs> Jones would not give that up this week. There's McNair, back to pass again. Looking, looking, throws, the man is open. That's Donald Ray Ross. He's at the five. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Rob, I know, that, I know how much confidence that must give Donald Ray Ross. He took some hard licks in the early season. We had a bruised sternum when somebody planted a helmet right in his chest, and I thought he was a little fearful of catching the football over the middle. That's got to really get his game going. I'll tell you, he was play. wide open on this play. Caught it right in stride. Three JSU defenders couldn't handle it, and Jacana will come in for the point after. He beat Sean Patton, got behind him, and it was Katie Barr the door. David Jacana with the uh, point after attempt, and it is good. And already in the ball game, the Alcorn Braves strike first. It's Alcorn seven, Jackson State nothing. You're watching the Capital City Classic on TV3. Alcorn 
State Braves strike first on their opening drive. It's 7 0 Braves. Jackson State now will receive the ball. That's LaShawn Osmer, and he is dangerous. He's at the 10, 15, 20, still on his feet, and he's knocked down as a fumble on the play, and it looks like Alcorn has it. There's no signal yet, and it's all course football. Well, it's pretty obvious Jackson State can't avoid those kind of uh, errors early. William Arnold and his team will have to retire to the bench here. They have still not run a play from scrimmage. As you see Osmer come up the right side. Looks like he's going to get some extra yardage on the second effort at number 45. Coming in there for the Alcorn Braves. Hit him hard, popped it loose, and that's Tito Davis, the sophomore from Monroe, Louisiana. Alcorn has it. First and 10 at the JSU 28, and Rob, that first drive took all of a minute and 36 seconds. Steve McNair came into the game needing 28 touchdowns <laughs> to surpass Willie Totten. At this rate, he's going to do it. <laughs> he may get it. It's that the 28-yard line is where Alcorn will operate, and you can't keep giving Steve McNair these chances. He's already He already has 72 yards passing with one touchdown, and we've just started this ball game. So you can see McNair will operate out of the shotgun with the ball resting at the 28. There's a snap, McNair. Back to pass. We have uh, a delay in this ball game. The officials delay play for just on the offense. Five yard penalty. First and 15. All Warren has been tagged for a delay of game as Byron Johnson just illustrated. Jackson State practices all week against their own run and shoot, and that's why we think both defenses should have a little edge here today coming in because they practice against uh, Asbury. They practice against McNair. They've seen this offense all year long, but Steve McNair is not your ordinary guy. Well, they back McNair up five yards, and that will give him more room to operate. I think the closer he gets to the goal line, the, 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 the more harm he gets. So McNair operating out with a shotgun. Back to pass. He escapes the pressure. McNair takes off. He's at the 25. 20 still on his feet. I thought he was going out of bounds play, but McNair is out at about the 14-yard line of Jackson State. Robbie's patented that spin move. I mean, he's a ballerina. He gets to the <laughs> sideline, does his little twirl, as you see here. Flushed out of the pocket. Wanted to hit Hinton, I think, down the left-hand side. Pressure closing. Nobody open. Takes off to the left. I believe Lauren Gavin will stick him at to finally bring him down. But as you see... Boy, he's tough. He's like the pinball wizard. Gavin <laughs> brings him down at the 21, excuse me, the 15-yard line. They're going to officially call it the 16 as McNair again operates out of the shotgun. Back to pass. Quick pass. A great catch by his brother Tim McNair. He has played sensational all season. He's a keeper. He's a gamer. Excellent job by lucky number seven. As we said, he leads this club in uh, receptions this year. He's just done an outstanding job for uh, the Braves down the stretch. James Carson wondering how to stop Steve McNair. As you see him on the sideline. McNair moving the ball against Jackson State. It's on the 12-yard line. It's second down and six for Alcorn. Three receivers to the left. McNair again to pass. Looking plenty of time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Rolls, throws, and it's almost picked off by Picasso Nelson. The pass was intended for Kobe Jenkins. Nelson and Lewis on the coverage. Uh, they converged on uh, the receiver, and Steve really threw it in the crowd that time, trying to reach uh, his uh, target about the two-yard line. McNair back and, and looking. Sees a guy cutting across the middle. Now he's flushed out. Now a little desperation. Just cannot uh, zip that one in there. The Tigers knock it away. Third down for Alcorn. Can Jackson State's defense step up here following the fumble kickoff by LaShawn Osmond? There's McNair. Back to pass. Plenty of time. Throws. He's got a man. And he drops the football. Tim McNair had a sure touchdown, but he hit him in a bad spot. The hand. We jinxed him. <laughs> He's playing so well. And that one uh, snuck away from him. He probably could have walked in or struggled that last couple of yards, and Alcorn might have been up by two touchdowns. They're just a little bit behind. Cannot haul it in. That was a great defensive effort by Jackson State. Now Jacana will come on to attempt a 30, make it a 29-yard field goal. David Jacana. We have movement on the line. A flag is down, and I think one of the Jackson State players jumped across the line before it was time for him to jump. Let's get the official call. Now, if it's on all corners, this may really hurt All him. side. 
on the defense. Five yards. Still not enough for a first down. Fourth and one, you, you wonder now what they might do. And I think they bring the offense back on the field, Rob. If I'm the Braves, I'm certainly going to try it. Cardio Jones brings McNair in. A, a great decision I would do. If I had a Heisman Trophy candidate like McNair, he could sneak in with one yard. Well, I mean, you want to deliver the knockout punch early. A lot of things can happen on a field goal. It can get blocked, you retreat, give up field position, fourth and one. Jackson State making several mistakes early on in this Capital City Classic. So it's fourth down and a long two to go for Alcorn. Stack backfield. McNair hands it off. He's got the first down, almost got a touchdown. That's Sharon Harness from McGee, Mississippi. Sharon Harness scored the game winner last week. A senior, been around a while, paid his dues, and he got the big fourth down conversion off the uh, left-hand side, and uh, the Braves are knocking at the door once again. Sharon Harness was the man that scored the touchdown against Troy State last week to win the ball game for Alcorn State. Now the Braves have it first and goal from the Jackson State three-yard line. Stacked backfield for McNair. Hands it off to Harness. Harness over the left side. Touchdown, Alcorn State. Harness put his 5'10", 196 off the left-hand side, and Alcorn is now up two touchdowns, and it's taken all of three and a half minutes, Rob. And I'm sure James Carson didn't want this ball game to start like this. Alcorn with a chance to go up 14-0, pending the point after by David Giacana. Giacana's missed only three PATs all season. Snap is down, kick is up, it's on the way, and it is good. So at 11 minutes, 24 seconds of the first quarter, Alcorn State has jumped out to a 14-0 lead. This is the Capital City Classic on TV3. And while we were away, Jackson State's Greg Spann made a nice return all the way up to the 44-yard line. Jackson State will operate in nice field position. Glenn Applewhite, your injured player there on the return by JSU, and the, the Tigers are a little soul-searching here as they set up their offense at the 44-yard line, trying to get back in the football game. And this is our first chance to see the run-and-shoot offense by Jackson State, implemented by John Shannon, the offensive coordinator of the Tigers. Dale Asbury, he likes to run with the football. Keep an eye on that. In the backfield for Jackson State is William Arnold. Second straight year, he's rushed for two or 1,000 yards, actually. As Asbury will operate from the shotgun. Man in motion for the Tigers. There's a snap. Asbury back to pass. Low pass to William Arnold, and he has stopped right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. 270 pounds, Sidney Middleton uh, smelled that one like a cheeseburger, baby, <laughs> and was all over the little middle screen that the Tigers attempted here with William Arnold. Arnold, a uh, terrific uh, back, but uh, had no place to go there. And Jackson State will snap it once again. They give Arnold one yard on that play, and Asbury will get under center. There's a snap, Arnold with the football, and Arnold with nice running for the first down. Nice hold off the right side. Uh, Mr. Arnold only goes about 180 pounds, and uh, we talked to him earlier on Sports Journal about his ability to run inside or outside. Really a tough guy for 5'10", 181, has done so in the absence of a big back, although Maurice Hampton has done a nice job as we look at Glenn Applewhite on the all-court bench. Jackson State will operate from the 45-yard line of Alcorn. Arnold again in the backfield as Asbury is under center. Alcorn showing blitz. The handoff to Arnold all over the right side. Arnold with nice look at Arnold to the 30-yard line. Let's go down on the field with Ed Pittler. Let's go on the field with Ed Fiddler. He has a guess. Apparently, we've uh, had some difficulties with Ed Fiddler. We'll try to get back with him on that. Ten minutes to play in the first quarter. Jackson State with the football at Alcorn's 30-yard line, and the Tigers are driving. Asbury from the shotgun. Two receivers to each side. Asbury looking. Throws to Greg Spann. Spann man at the 20. 
in from room and he's knocked down at about the 17 or 18 yard line fan has been reliable 36 catches this year six touchdowns uh, out of Knoxville County where a lot of Jackson State players have uh, hailed from caught him in the left flat and he was uh, off to the races nice pickup first down gainer Tigers at the 17. It's nice to see Spann playing. Last year, he was ruled academically ineligible, but he is an NFL pro prospect. Asbury operating out of the shotgun. Jackson State at the 17. There's a fade route to Osmer. It's a touchdown! Jackson State, that's their favorite play, and JSU has scored on the all corn Braves. That was Jerome Young instead of LaShawn Osmer. Out of your alma mater, my man. That's a Lanier High graduate. <laughs> Terrific play. Threw it in the corner of the end zone. Young stretched out. Official gave him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was in. Let's check it out. Looked close to me as Asbury fired in the corner. Young was where he was supposed to be. Oh, he got it. One foot down. What no a problem at all. catch by Young. Oh, my goodness. And Coach Carson told us that this may be a shootout. The field goal or the point after is good, and JSU has closed the gap. It's 14-7. You're watching the Capital City Classic on TV3. Welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium for the very first Capital City Classic featuring the Alcorn Braves and the Jackson State Tigers. Our score is 14-7 in favor of Alcorn. Let's see if we can go down to Ed Fittler on the field. Eddie. Apparently, we're still having difficulties with Ed Fiddler, but Jackson State now will kick off to Alcorn. Back for the Braves is Glory White, number 12, and Percy Singleton. White has had a problem fumbling the football himself play. Corey White you're talking about. Corey White. He's exactly. been up and down this year. He either returns it for a touchdown or has coughed it up, made some errors in the Sam Houston State game, but has picked his game up since then. As the Braves come in 7-2 and 1, hoping for that eighth win in a playoff berth. So Harold Jones will kick off for Jackson State. His patented phrase is, get it by. <laughs> it goes to Gory White at about the eight-yard line. White at the 20. White with a little room. Oh, he fumbles the ball. We just mentioned it. it Fortunately for Alcorn, it goes out of bounds. We just talked about White fumbling the football, and he put it on the ground. I think Kobe Jenkins tried to tackle him there, Rob. His <laughs> old man looked like he upended him about the 25, and the loose, loose leather uh, popped out, went out of bounds, so Alcorn will retain possession. Could have been a nice uh, turnabout of spare play for the Tigers, <laughs> who uh, could have been back on the field with their offense. You know, I was talking to uh, uh, the defensive coordinator of Alcorn, Mario Kirks, and he was telling me that White, he runs track and he moves his arms as a track runner, therefore he doesn't protect the ball as well. So uh, we'll see more of White a little bit later in the day if they don't pull him out. They're going to super glue <laughs> his uh, elbow to his side, I think. <laughs> so all corner will operate from their own 27-yard line, McNair in the shotgun. He's back to pass. Plenty of time. McNair will pick you apart. That pass was almost picked off by Jackson State. Benjamin Mosley. A little surprising he tried to throw into that much coverage, but Steve uh, feels like he's got that bionic arm. He can throw it wherever he wants to. Bypassed a couple of Tigers who had a swipe at it, looking for his older brother, Tim McNair. Look at him throw right through there. There's Nelson. Almost got it to him. As you see, Jackson State has on this series with Alcorn State, but the Braves, as you mentioned, Clay, has won the last three. Jackson State trying to stop the bleeding. McNair back to pass. Plenty of time looking, and he takes off. He's dangerous. Look at him at the 30. He's at the 35-40. McNair at midfield, and he's out of bounds at about the 49-yard line of Jackson State. He's a Gale Sayers in Cleveland. Listen to that. Sean Patton, number 47, <laughs> trying to come up and make the stop here. Had the angle on him, and watch Steve outrun Patton. Forget about it. A DB on this quarterback who has been timed 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, up the left-hand side. He's run out of bounds by Brian Bolton. McNair again with the signals. He's already rushed for 40 yards in this ball game. Ball at the 49-yard line of, of Alcorn, actually. 
McNair again out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the right. One man in the backfield. McNair back to pass. Looking, looking. Throws. That's Kobe Jenkins. And he makes the catch. Knocked down by Bo Lewis to Alcorn with another first down on Jackson State. In fact, there's a lot of guys on this Alcorn team from Jackson, Mississippi. The Braves have a uh, quite a large arsenal on the Braves-Jackson connection. Four or five ball players playing really in their hometown here for Alcorn today. Lawrence Hill, Hinton, who made a big play against Southern. Hodges, Jenkins, Jones, Calvin Robinson, the DB. Two players out of Jim Hill, one from Murrah, Clinton, Callaway. And there you go. And McNair with the football at the 37-yard line of Jackson State. He's back to pass again. Throws it to Bullock. Bullock at the 30-yard line. He's knocked down. Has a little uh, pass right out of the backfield to the running back. And Alcorn now with a five-yard gain, five-yard shy of the first down. Head coach Cardell Jones of Alcorn State told me yesterday that they would take what the Jackson State defense was going to give them. And as you see, we're almost full here. This is a nice crowd here to watch. Perhaps Steve McNair's last collegiate game. Should they win, they would make the playoffs, um, perhaps. But uh, everyone wants to see McNair. This may be his last game in Mississippi. So now McNair with a strange twist under center. Looking, looking, throws. A man is open. Tim McNair. Touchdown. All for him stay. The oh Braves my. caught Jackson State in a blitz, Rob. They sent two or three guys. Specifically, Andre Taylor on the left-hand side, and Big Daddy is a little bit worried as Alcorn stretches its lead back to two touchdowns. They're giving McNair too much time, and he hit Tim McNair right on the run touchdown. Too much time, even when you blitz. I mean, that's all you can do. <laughs> oh, my. The Braves up 20-7 to on Jackson State, pending the outcome of this point after. David Jacana. Well, booted for the Braves. He's had a nice season so far. Jacana from Houston, Texas. The kick is up, and it is good. And with eight minutes to go in the first quarter, Alcorn, 21, Jackson State, 7. We'll be back to the Capital City Classic right after this. Twenty-one seven is our score in favor of Alcorn. Kicking for the Braves is Shannon Williams, and the kick goes short. It's at the 20-yard line. JSU has it, and he's got a little room. He's knocked down at about the 46-yard line. That's where Jackson State will operate. That was Jason Perry with the football for the Tigers. Jackson State hoping to avoid a four-game sweep by Steve McNair and the Braves. Alcorn looking to make it to the playoffs with a win here against Jackson State. Rob, as you take a look at the SWAC standings here today, Alcorn still has an outside shot of tying for the SWAC crown if Grambling should lose to Southern next week in the Bayou Classic. As you see, William Arnold get ready to crank it up for the Tigers. So Jackson State will operate at its own 35-yard line. William Arnold in the backfield for the Tigers. He's had a marvelous season for Jackson State. This is his last game, and that's going to be an illegal motion against the Tigers. Big number 71 move for Jackson State. A little anxious there, and the Tigers will be backed up five yards. Well, start on the offense. First and 15. Mr. 71 is not on the roster, and he may wish he was not on the team after that one, but... Uh... <laughs> Jackson State's bench a little worried about giving up 21 quick points to Alcorn State. The way this thing is going, hey, the Braves may score 100. I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it. They may beat the basketball team. How about that? <laughs> Jackson State will operate first and 15 from its own 30-yard line. Jackson State has caused itself a lot of harm, a fumble, and a couple of penalties. That's William Arnold with the football. He loves that Alcorn defense. Look at him go. He's near midfield. He gets 15 yards and more, and it's a first down for Jackson State. Well, James Carson said he did not want to get in the shootout, but I don't think he can avoid it now if they're going to have to play catch-up football. But that Alcorn defense, that front four and even the front seven, plays it like a, uh, a screen door in a submarine. There's a lot of room there. <laughs> Jackson State at the 48-yard line of Alcorn. That's where William Arnold will try to eat that Alcorn defense alive. Darrell Asbury under center. He said this is the biggest game of the year for him. He didn't want to make it to the playoffs. He wanted to beat Alcorn. This is his playoff. Oh, look at Asbury with the fake pitch to Arnold. But Alcorn snuffed it out. He only gained about two yards on the play. Not a bad call. 
similar to the quarterback draw, but he just made the fake, turned and uh, turned it upfield. But Sidney Middleton is really uh, staying at home today. Look at him. He went past Middleton, but the Tigers converge. The Braves, rather, and that's uh, Harry Brown, inserted last week on defense, a former running back for the Braves. Cedric Dunbar is in, the punter for Jackson State. He's playing the tight end. Look at Arnold move the football. It's another first down for Jackson State as Arnold takes it to the 40-yard line. He's running the football like James Johnson. He came in with 1,055 yards, and uh, he'll be the workhorse. Hey, give it to me 20, 25 times as Alcorn little student body right here behind that big offensive line. Arnold finds a hole. The rest is up to him. First down conversion. Jackson State with the football at the 40-yard line of Alcorn. Braves lead it 21-7. to That's Asbury handing it off to William Arnold. Arnold up to about the... 31 yard line close to a first down but he'll be about a yard shot Glenn Applewhite looks like he may be out for a while Alcorn is going to need some help up front they've really struggled all season long have given up a lots of points Alcorn has called a timeout and we'll take one as well 621 to go the Braves lead it 21-7 this is the Capital City Classic on TV3 Sports The Capital City Classic is brought to you by Honda and your Jackson Honda dealers and Williamson Poultry Farms. And while we were away, Darrell Asbury, the quarterback of Jackson State, took it on his own and he got the first down and Jackson State will have it at the 25-yard line of Alcorn State. Asbury in the shotgun, as you saw, defensive coordinator Mario Kirksey of the Braves what a worry look on his face, Asbury. There's a pass to Young. Young from Lanier High School here in Jackson. He'll get it down to about the 22-yard line of all court. That'll bring up a second down and about six. Mr. Young might be the sleeper here today. The sophomore wide receiver just goes 5'9 and 160, but has made two nice plays here early on at the 544 mark of the first quarter. Ball resting on the 21-yard line, Asbury checking with Arnold. Two receivers to the right, one, actually two to the left. Asbury changing the plays at the line, as you can see. He sees something in that Alcorn defense that he didn't like. He hands it off to William Arnold. He shakes the tackle. Arnold at the 15. Arnold down to about the 10-yard line. And Jackson State threatening to close the gap as Steve McNair getting set to get back in this game. Well, Steve only needs, uh, what is it, 26 more touchdown passes to, uh, <laughs> to catch Willie Totten, and he may have to do it as Jackson State is moving well offensively. Arnold shedding tacklers and making a moves inside the Braves' 15-yard line. Harry Brown, the converted running back, once again on the tackle. First down and 10 for Jackson State at the Alcorn 11-yard line. Asbury under center. He'll call his own number. That's the draw we were talking about. Touchdown, Jackson State. Look at that, and he gives it an in your face to McNair. Oh, a little touche. <laughs> the Heisman posed by Asbury. He's been waiting to let that loose all week. And Jackson State is once again within a touchdown. Asbury tucked it under on the quarterback draw and <laughs> gave the, the Braves secondary a little what for right here. <laughs> we talked about that at the top of the show. That's Asbury's favorite play. He loves to run with the football. Rock Dean to attempt the point after, almost blocked, but it is good. And now, with four minutes, 58 seconds to play in the first quarter, it's Alcorn 21, Jackson State 14. Rob, at this rate, we're going to have a game in the 70s. <laughs> As we take a look at the replay, Asbury, a little two-strap drop, sees a huge hole, a gaping hole, runs it in, and here you go. <laughs> Obviously, a Sports Journal fan has watched us warm up as well, doing our own Heisman pose. And you know, and he looked good doing that. He looks uh, awfully good as he gave it to Eliante Bell, who is considered the best cover guy in the all-corn secondary, Asbury telling Osmer, this is how we're going to do it, this is how we're going to rally. I was just asked uh, by my good friend Bill Ellison, does either one of these teams have a punter? 
<laughs> we may, we may not, not find out. That is exactly right. Look at this crowd. We're inviting you to join us tomorrow night for Sports Journal at 1015, where we will, of course, uh, preview the Ole Miss Mississippi State football game. But today it's the Capital City Classic. We'll recap all of that action. As Alcorn and JSU get it on for the 49th time here, Jackson State scoring drive just took three minutes and four seconds. Asbury on the 11-yard keeper. We've had uh, five possessions and five touchdowns. This stadium is rocking. A capacity crowd here at Mississippi Memorial Stadium. There's the kick by Harold Jones. Percy Singleton won't take it out. A good kick by Jones in the end zone, and Alcorn will bring it out at the 20-yard line. This might well be the largest crowd since 1984 when this place was packed to over 62,000. Steve McNair dons the gold helmet, comes out once again, and I think we're going to look at some uh, prolific numbers here today when this thing is said and done. You see the 54 JS on the back of the helmet by McNair, that, of course, representing Jack Spinks, as they remember the late Jack Spinks. And look at the precision and the quickness of those drives, all under two minutes on the TDs by the Braves. Asbury now looking at his counterpart, Steve McNair of Alcorn State. McNair with the signals as Alcorn will bring it out at the 20-yard line. That's where McNair will operate out of the shotgun. McNair drops back. Pressure is on. He steps up in the pocket. And he's sacked! Oh, my! McNair was sacked by Brian Bolton. Brian Bolton leads this club in sacks. He has four. McNair took off. The Tigers converge. Boy, that's got to give that defense a lot of confidence because Steve McNair is not caught behind the line of scrimmage very often. Backpedals just a bit as the Tigers converge. Shakes one man, comes to his left. But it's turn out the lights time. So now Alcorn with the second and 16, the ball on the 14-yard line. McNair drops back. Looking, looking. No one open. There's a pressure. McNair escapes. Throws across the middle. That's Kobe Jenkins at the 35. And he's knocked down. Well, he fights and fights. And he's down at about the 39-yard line. That's where the officials will mark it. The Tigers did exactly what they wanted to, Rob. They had McNair hemmed up. Brian Bolton from the right side. Lauren Gavin, the linebacker, in a rush position on the left side. And yet he finds a man down the middle for a huge gainer. It's Bolton from the left here. Lauren Gavin backpedaling. They've got him where they want him. Gavin has got containment. And look at him throw across his body <laughs> to find Jenkins. I need to get you a telestrator. How about man. that? Three minutes, 57 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. McNair again out of the shotgun. Ball at the 39. McNair, plenty of time. Throws downfield, and it's too tall for Marcus Hinton. And that's pretty tall because, uh, <laughs> as you know, Marcus Hinton nickname is 6'6". Uh, and really has just not been a factor much in uh, the late season after uh, injuring that uh, right leg, a stress fracture in the Sam Houston State game, and he is off the field again. Just spot duty for a uh, 6'6", number one who has been a, uh, a big target for Steve over his career at Alcorn. As you saw, McNair flash a six in his play calling. Ball at the 39-yard line of Alcorn. McNair again, back to pass. That's the same old song. McNair escapes another tackle. Throws. The pass is complete to Tony Bullock out of McGee, Mississippi, home of the McGee Trojans. And Big Daddy is saying, how can we not get hold of McNair? Quincy Coleman made the stop. But again, excellent containment. You've got Gavin on the left, Bolton on the right. He steps up in the pocket this time, finds that second, third, and fourth receiver as the Braves continue to march it down the football field. They're in Jackson State's territory. The ball is resting at the 47-yard line. McNair with the play calling. Nice helmet at the 50-yard line. You got to wonder if Archie Cooley is enjoying this ball game with all this wide-open action. He's got to love it. He invented it. That's McNair again. Kobe Jenkins couldn't grab a hold of it, and that'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Braves. Wow, an incomplete pass. Can't believe it. Stops the clock with 3.12 remaining here in the first quarter. Jackson State says, we're in the ball game. We are in this one. Looks nice like shot of Lewis. the crowd. So Alcorn will have a second down to operate from. The ball is at the 47-yard line. They lead it 21-14. to 14. Jackson State hadn't been able to stop McNair all day long. McNair back to pass. 
Air McNair, plenty of time, throws. The catch is made by Bullock. Bullock slips the tackle, slips another one, and he's knocked down by Picasso Nelson in Jackson State's territory as he advances the football to about the 33 or 34 yard line. It was Nelson and Brian Bolton, number 91, converging on the play as Bullock has really gotten more action in this ball game than we've seen in a good while. Braves had three wide receivers left as they come across the middle. He found Bullock out of the backfield. Tigers converge about the 33 yard line. Donald Ray Ross goes out, all corn with three men to the left and one to the right. Gavin was almost flagged for offsides. I think he will be. McNair with a free play now. Rolls to his left. Throws. There's a man in the end zone. Tim McNair. Oh, he almost made the touchdown, but he couldn't hang on. Excellent coverage there by Quincy Coleman. He's a freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama. Quincy Coleman said, has played a great, uh, has had a great season for Jackson State thus far. Looked like Gavin did jump, and as you said, uh, Steve just rolled to his left, found some time there, and looked for his older brother in the rear of the end zone. Coleman just neck and neck there. Oh, he almost made that catch. It is, it is offsides on Jackson State, and that will give the Braves five extra yards to make the first down. First and five for Alcorn State. As you see, Tim McNair leaving the field. May have had the wind knocked out of him on that play. Tony Bullock in the backfield for the Braves. As you see, McNair just winking to his ball players <laughs> with number six. Ball at the 29-yard line of Jackson State. Trips to the left. One man to the right. One man in the backfield. McNair. There's a pass to the outside to Bullock again. Bullock has become his favorite receiver so far in this ball game. Bullock with the first down. Tiger secondary, not a, excuse me, not a bad job there. And Sean Woodson, the freshman out of Jackson, Jim Hill, converged, made a nice play on Bullock, who attempted to spin away, and Tony Bullock is down on the football field about the 21-yard line. Tigers don't want to lose the uh, senior running back out of McGee. Sardell says no problem. Oh, my, that would be a big blow to all four. Let's see what happened on this play. My bullet looked like he twisted his knee. Oh, you see, his knee was twisted in the defender of Jackson State. I think there was a flag on the play against Jackson State. So Bullock is up and moving, so that's a good sign for the Braves. Two minutes, 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. Bullock with 40 yards in receptions for Alcorn State today. Looked like he may have twisted his ankle slightly. We'll try to get uh, the official word from Eddie Fiddler, who's down on the sideline. Move the chains, Rob J. It's first and 10 once again as the Braves threaten to score their first, excuse me, their fourth touchdown of the first quarter. Ball at the 18-yard line of Jackson State. The Tigers haven't been able to stop all Corn's offense since the kickoff. McNair will take this one under center. There's a snap. McNair back to pass. Looking, looking. The pressure is on. McNair scrambling. Look at it. Move. Oh, he slips down. I've never seen McNair slip and fall. He lost a lot of yards on that play. So a good stop by Jackson State. Carlos Lockhart chasing Air McNair this afternoon. Steve looked like he uh, slipped there just a bit. Uncharacteristic. When he gets in this position, he's got him where he wants him. Oh, he has it where he wants it. You're right. But he slipped right at the 30-yard line. Maybe the paint on that three <laughs> to help Jackson State in that instance. This is the Tigers' home field. Ball now at the 32-yard line. It'll be second down at 24 yards to go. <laughs> you see that 30. Maybe that paint uh, helped McNair slip on that play. McNair back to pass. Back to pass. Looking, looking. Throws it off the middle. Tim McNair, he heard the footsteps and he dropped the football. That's really uncharacteristic for Tim because he's really a gutty guy who will go over the middle and will take whatever punishment he has to to hang on to the football. I think he did hear some footsteps there as the Tigers perhaps talking now in the secondary. <laughs> if you're going to catch it, you're going to pay. And Tim uh, just off the fingertips is number 25. Andre Taylor was converging. He's the freshman from Seattle, Washington, as the Tigers got a number of uh, transfers from the Washington program after the Huskies went on their NCAA probation. Alcorn with trips to the left, Singleton to the right. Harness in the backfield. McNair back to pass. Throws. 
He's got a man. Kobe Jenkins, what a catch. What a catch by Jenkins. That's your Heisman Trophy candidate right there. You can't throw it any better. There's only one place that young man can catch the football, and Steve threw it on about a 40-yard line, about two feet off the ground. Jenkins made the diving catch. Steve standing at about the 45, and you can't throw it any better. Oh, what a throw and what a catch. McNair threaded the needle on that. That's he a, is tremendous. Well, that's the way you used to do it in those backyard uh, pickup games. <laughs> he is one tremendous athlete. All core now with the football deep in Jackson State's territory, threatening to score again. McNair already with 206 yards in this ball game. He's in the shotgun, back to pass, looking, pump fakes, throws. It's picked off, picked off by Bo Lewis. Picked off by Derek Bo Lewis. McNair tried to thread it one too many times, and Bo Lewis picks it off. What a stand by the JSU defense. That's an upset in itself because Steve came in with a 4-1 to one ratio, touchdowns to interceptions, 48 scores on the year. Just threw it behind his intended receiver, Percy Singleton, and Bo Lewis, another freshman out of that talent-rich program at Louisville, Mississippi, Oh, we got oh. us a ball game. And now Jackson State with a chance to tie this ball game up. Oh, my goodness. Bo Lewis wearing the number familiar Jackson State, uh, that is familiar to Jackson State fans, once worn by Robert Turner, the late uh, defensive back for the Tigers. JSU with it now at the 20-yard line. There's a handoff to Arnold. Arnold, tough going up the middle. He'll be stopped after about two yards gain. Stopped by a host of brave tacklers as you look at Kobe Jenkins. Kobe Jenkins out of Murrah High School. Uh, when I talked to him when he was leaving Murrah, signing with all court, I asked him what made the difference. He said Steve McNair. No question about it. He's been a great recruiting tool for the brave program. So it's second down and eight yards to go for Jackson State. Ball at the 22-yard line. There's a man in motion. That's Walker. Pass in the backfield to Arnold. Arnold at the 25, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Look at Bo Lewis. He's excited. He's pumped, baby. He intercepted a Steve McNair pass. He's Boy, you can tell away. his kids about that as you look at your 1AA playoff first there. And Youngstown State, many rumor will be Alcorn's uh, opening round opponent should the Braves get past Jackson State today. Those teams, those five are in, 11 to be determined. It will be a tough field once again. Marshall, a traditionally very tough program. Asbury operating out of the shotgun. Ball at the 27. He takes off. Can't find a receiver. Asbury, he's one of the fastest men on the Jackson State football team, and he got the first down. Showed me something there on his speed to the corner. And, Clay, you know he is competing himself against Steve McNair. You know in his mind he wants to do better than McNair. No question about it. When we saw him last night at the uh, the bonfire and the pep rally on campus, he says, we're going to hurt him. We are going to hurt him because they're tired of hearing all this talk. Alcorn has dominated the series the last three years, and McNair has been the difference. 19 seconds to go in the first quarter. Seems just like we've been here forever. Big Daddy is vehement, really chewing on a ref there. Yeah. Takes his cap off and is going at it. He has to be restrained Look at by Big his Daddy. offensive line coach. That's Carl Roberts restraining Big Daddy. He is upset about something. Must have been a bad spot. It is. They are not giving him the the first down. It's fourth and one. And look at Big Daddy. Look at Big Daddy's face. Last night he said. When it comes to Friday and Saturday, I'm short on words, boy. My game face is on, and you, you see it there. Oh, my goodness. I thought he did have the first down. I thought he stepped past it. He tiptoed the sidelines. Looked like his right foot went out in front of the uh, the orange marker, but it's going to be fourth and inches. And what do you do in this situation, Clay? Do you go for it uh, against Alcorn's defense, or do you punt it? <laughs> well, you know, that would be a dumb question, except that they are going against Alcorn, and, and the Braves have not been able to stop the Tigers thus far. But you've got to punt the ball away. It's inches to go for the first down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make nope. you go for it, Clay Hall. It's inches to go for the first down. Would you go for it? Alcorn's defense. At JSU's <laughs> offense is still on the field. Boy, this is gutsy early in the first quarter. But I guess you got to figure, hey, there's a lot of football to play. Fourth and uh, looks like maybe a foot. And the Tigers are going for it on their own 30-yard line. This is a big call for Carson. William Arnold, who's been 
eating up Jack uh, Alcorn's defense throughout this ball game. Look at Big Daddy. He's hot. Boy, he is. <laughs> and Cardell wants a word as well. I really sensed last night, Rob, that Big Daddy thought he, his his club was going to get him today, and he may well do it. And I, I tell you, this makes uh, this is a huge statement. Fourth and inches at your own 30-yard line. I say go for it. Look at Cardell. He's it. He's on the field now. Uh oh! Oh no! They're saying it's a first down. Oh my goodness! You can't beat good old swag football. <laughs> Swack officiating. What do we got here? I think Big Daddy talked him into it. Ball is across the 30. It's first and 10. They're saying it's the first down for Jackson State now. Big Daddy won his case. I'm going to have Big Daddy as my lawyer. How there about that? There you go. <laughs> first down for Jackson State at the 31-yard line. Mark Walker in motion. Alcorn. Show blitz. Asbury changes the play. Five, eight seconds to go on the play clock. There's a pitch to Arnold. They would have gotten it anyway. Second down now for Jackson State. He gained about three yards on that play. Big Daddy may be doing a cameo on L.A. Law next year. <laughs> well, we are nearing the end of the first quarter. Our score is Alcorn 21, Jackson State 14. You're watching the Capital City Classic on TV3. at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium for the inaugural Capital City Classic. Alcorn leading Jackson State by seven, but the Tigers threatening Alcorn now. There's a pass to Osmer. He's across midfield. Osmer into Alcorn's territory at about the 38-yard line. Nice Os pass by Asbury. Sure was. Osmer, not a burner, but a good possession receiver. The guy who cut across the middle there was wide open. It looked like the Braves were playing a little deep zone. As you look at our first quarter stats, first down's about even. Total plays. Alcorn has uh, controlled that one. Passing yards. Alcorn way ahead. Rushing yards goes to the Tigers. One turnover for each ball club. Jackson State with the football at Alcorn's 38-yard line. Steve McNair wondering if his defense can hold. Asbury licking his chops. One man in the backfield two receivers either side of Asbury. The handoff to Arnold. Oh, he's stuffed by big number 48 of the Braves. That's Jermaine Brown, the senior linebacker out of Port Gibson, perhaps is tired of hearing this talk that the Braves <laughs> can't stop anyone. Oh, he plugged that hole, and he plugged it up quick. Arnold will be feeling that one tomorrow. Look at that, Clay. You see that? That's an airplane in the back of his head. How about that? He's ready to lift off. You got it. That McNair... <laughs> Second down for Jackson State. About eight yards to go. Asbury doesn't like what he sees. Three seconds on the play clock. Two, one. He snaps it. Fakes to Arnold. Look, look. Throws across the middle. There's a catch. It is made by Jerome Young. He's stepping up big in this ball game. Boy, as Jackson sure State nears the goal line. Good diving catch by Young who went down low to get it. Asbury with a fake to Arnold. Rolls to his left. Goes right across the middle. Young went down to get it. That is a first down pickup. Move the chains. Oh, my goodness. You wonder what would have happened had Asbury, or actually Osmer, fumbled on that kickoff. First down and 10 for Jackson State. The give is to Arnold. He goes up the middle. The running is tough, but he gets about five yards on the play. Arnold has played well. Asbury has played well. He is 7 of 7, has not missed the strike zone <laughs> early in this ball game as we have just begun the second quarter. Speaking of the, the zones, Jackson State is in the red zone now, and the Tigers have uh, been very successful inside the red zone. The ball is inside the 20-yard line at the 17 as you take a look at William Arnold. Asbury under center. Has a receiver on either side. The give is to Arnold. He slips, shakes a tackle. And he's stuffed at about the 17 back at the line of scrimmage. 
He shook a tackle by Bryant Mix, number 50. Mix originally signed with the Tigers, had some problems qualifying, went to the Juco route. Big Daddy. That's my lawyer right there, baby. Big Daddy. Big Daddy he needs won his it. case. I've never seen a guy win a case against an official. He, took, he took a big gulp, and he's ready to go. Mix on the stop. <laughs> Playing for Alcorn after originally signing with the Tigers out of high school. Maybe some mixed emotions out there now. Jackson State with the football at the 15-yard line. Asbury under center. Alcorn showing a four-man front. Asbury rolls to his right. He'll take off. But he will not get the first down. He's very close to it. They may bring the sticks out. Credit the Alcorn defense with nice pursuit on that one. A host of uh, Braves... I don't know if he got it or not. He's very close to the first down. Look at this crowd. Nice crowd on hand here. I think he's a little short. I think he uh, Asbury carried it down to the 13-yard line. He's got to go to about the 12, inside the 12 for the first. As Big Daddy in his third season at JSU came into this ball game 19-12 and one. And I'll to say the least, the, the water runs deep in this one for him. He's a JSU grad. He said uh, last night at the uh, pep rally that uh, he was around when most of those kids were uh, still a twinkle in their mom and dad's <laughs> eye and uh, this game means a tremendous amount to him as you see the years he's had seven and four his first year seven and three this year coming in and boy this would be a feather in the cap okay. laying a solid foundation for the Tigers taking over for the uh, very successful WC Gordon and many predicted Jackson State to finish near the bottom or close to Prairie View, but the Tigers have been very, very surprising this year. And the fact is, they came so close to winning all three of those games. They've lost them by a, uh, just a smidge of points and uh, really had a shot at a 9-1 or a 10-0 start. So now it's fourth down, Clay Hall, and Jackson State will go for it. Oh, you got to here. I mean, you got nothing to lose. You back them up on their 12-yard line. You can tie the football game here. Time to take some momentum away from the Braves. But you have Rock Dean, who's been uh, pretty uh, accurate so far this year. He is, a, he perhaps, I uh, think he is the best uh, field goal kicker in the SWAC. Tigers elect to go for it. So Jackson State will go for it on fourth and two. Mo Hampton is in the backfield for the Tigers. That's Asbury calling his own number, and he's snuffed. He is snuffed. It did not work. Oh, and McNair will come back on the field. Jermaine Brown comes up big. Asbury... Really likes to carry the football as a running back. Tucked it under, but Brown cut him off at the pass. That play loses four yards. Yeah, I don't know if I would have gone for it in that situation. Maybe kick the field goal, but it's uh, neither here nor there now as Jackson State did go for it, didn't get it. Big Daddy maybe second-guessing himself now as Alcorn will get the football back and put it into the hands of Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Second-guess Big Daddy right there. you got to go for that. <laughs> McNair back on the football field, 11.34 of the second quarter as he cranks up this prolific all-court offense, which averages 45 points a game. Look at that. As you just saw, a shot of Cardio Jones for many years, assistant at Jackson State. McNair with the pitch to his running back. He gets nowhere. Won't run on that Jackson State defense. Lauren that's, Gavin and a host of Tigers on the tackle. That's Tony Bullock back in the football game, obviously over his little ankle sprain. He gave ground. He should have just uh, sat down on it. Loses about three on the first down play as the uh, Tiger offense getting some pointers here from John Shannon. You see Carlos Cosby there, number 77. He's been selected to play in the blue-gray game, so he's going to have uh, a lot of postseason experience as he tries to make it to the next level. All coins McNair and Hinton, we are told, will be headed to the Senior Bowl in Mobile. That's McNair under center, back to pass. Throws to Bullock. Bullock is okay. He's at the 20, 25, 30, plenty of room. Look at Bullock move the football at midfield. And he's stopped by Picasso Nelson. First down for the first. That's been a pretty effective play thus far. Nobody's picking up Bullock out of the backfield. The Tigers secondary has played well against the wideouts. But again, the all-corn defense stretches you so thin that Bullock... There's not a man within 20 yards as he takes it on his 15, cuts up the left-hand side, and has it inside Tiger territory at the 49-yard line. So all corn at the 49-yard line. Bullock out of McGee, Mississippi, with a nice catch and carry there. McNair, quick pass to Kobe Jenkins. Jenkins spins, and he's knocked out at about the 41-yard line of Jackson State. 
Kobe Jenkins has really come into his own since leaving Murrah High School. Had a few problems with drop balls earlier in the year, but he is making a tremendous name for himself here at Alcorn State. Well, Cardell said uh, he and, and Tim really stepped up when Marcus came down with the injury, and they knew that he was not going to be a factor much uh, late in the season. 6'4", out of Jackson Murrah. They call him jump rope. Well, I tell you this, <laughs> he's got the hairdo of the century. <laughs> McNair now. Getting his offensive line straight, he's under center. Ball at the 41-yard line, the handoff to Bullock. Tough going as he tries to get the first down. He's close to the first down, just may have gotten it. Jump rope. Because of the hairstyle jump rope. That's what I figured, I'm yeah. just checking. Yeah, I think I may get that same style. Well, you can do you can do a lot of jumping through that hair. <laughs> <laughs> is he doing the all corn tomahawk chop, or is he saying it's the first down? <laughs> I think he's biased. That official is biased. Look at Big Daddy. He's hot. Move the chains. Jackson State controlling the ground game. Alcorn just 26 yards on the ground, but who needs it when you've got the uh, prolific offense they possess? Jackson State now with a four-man front as McNair gets under center. Trips to the right. Single receiver to the left. McNair back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws downfield. There's Tim McNair. Oh, he's popped at the 21-yard line, but he hung on to the football, and it's a first down. Number seven on number seven. Nelson came up and made the hit, but Tim McNair had made the catch at the JSU 22-yard line. And again, the Tigers have decided if you're going to catch the football, you're going to pay for it. Tim wide open the flat. Steve finds him, and oh, he turns oh out the lights. You know, they say he have a knack for getting open. He has a knack for getting open, and he is showing that today. He is always open when McNair is on the run. First and 10, ball at the 21-yard line of Jackson State. McNair, 268 yards passing. McNair, back to pass, looking, throws. It's caught, Donald Ray Rawls, touchdown, but a flag is down. A flag is down on the play, and it may be against Alcorn State. Jackson State is pointing to Alcorn, and I think it's going to be... No, now they're saying it may be against Jackson State. Let's get the official word. We have holding on the defense. Decline. Touchdown. Break up the band. It's a touchdown for the Braves. Now you wonder, should Big Daddy have gone for the field goal as opposed to the first down? Well, hindsight is always 20-20. Steve McNair drops to his 40-yard line, finds Donald Ray Ross, who hustles into the end zone, and Alcourt has built its lead back to two touchdowns. Jacana on for the point after. It's up, and it is good. It's 28-14. Alcorn is your leader. Stay tuned. More of the Capital City Classic in a moment. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium, the first annual Capital City Classic. You recall in the first quarter, number 64, Glenn Applewhite went down. Ford hamstring, he's probably through for the day. Clay, Rob, yours. Thank you, Eddie. I thought he had uh, gotten lost in the, in the band section. Well, you know, there's some pretty ladies down there, and Ed is the ladies' man. He was circulating. <laughs> he was getting the feel for this uh, Capital City Classic. As we said, it uh, looks like a full house. Could be more than uh, 100 empty seats, and I, I would think at this point we're looking at a crowd in uh, close to 60,000. So Alcorn now will kick it off to Jackson State, leading 28-14. There's the kick by Shannon Williams, and it's almost out of the stadium here. Jackson State will bring it out to the 20-yard line. A lot of hostilities between these two teams. This is the game that these two teams are anxious to play each and every year. It's the Super Bowl. It's city versus country in the little piece we did last night. Some of the Jackson State students uh, hooting those Braves for, <laughs> for coming from the country and not knowing how to act in the big city. Yeah, I think uh, one of the word used uh, was hick. It was indeed. Hick. Hick. <laughs> Braves don't think much of that. It's the Braves are putting a hickey on Jackson State right now. As you saw McNair. First and 10 for Jackson State, Asbury operating out of the shotgun. Two receivers to the left and right. Asbury, pressure on him. Low pass to Fan, and he stopped. 
That all-corner defense is stepping up, baby. Dante Dowers, the junior DB out of Bell Glade, Florida, comes from the talent-rich state of uh, Florida where they turn out so many. Division one and one double-A prospect, Steve McNair rooting his team on. That's a ah. nice right there, look at that. I haven't gotten that one yet. I hadn't received that myself. Look at that, Aaron McNair. <laughs> I can't quite make that out, Some but that's good a good nice wishes, I think, there from Eddie Robinson, the Grambling State head coach. Isn't that nice? Asbury in all kinds of trouble, and he's not down sack at the six-yard line. Oh, that all-court defense is stepping up now. Ryan Mix did play last year. Now he's stepping up. You just got six foot four inches and 275 pounds of fury <laughs> from Bryant Mix out of Water Valley. Came to the Tigers via Northwest Community College. Needs only two sacks to become the single season team leader in all corn state history. He said this week when we took this picture of him, he wished he had had his hair cut earlier. He wanted to look pretty, but then somebody said, man, you gotta look mean. You gotta look mean, baby. Jackson State deep in its own territory. Backs to the wall. Asbury from the shotgun. Throws long. He's got a man, but it's going to be picked off by Alcorn. Picked off by the Braves. That's number 27, Richard Mr. White. Richard White out of Dallas Carter, which has turned out so many performers in the Southwestern Conference. And Big Daddy says, hey, we put it up. It didn't work out sends his defense back on the field. Asbury throwing from his own one-yard line. Through, just overshot his man, Jerome Young, out of Lanier High School. And Richard White, the sophomore from Dallas, came up with the pick. Oh, my. You're giving McNair more chances to put points on the board. Eight minutes, 22 seconds to go in the first half. Alcorn with the ball just outside the 50-yard line at the 49. McNair will operate from the shotgun. He may go long and deep on this first play. John Shannon settles his quarterback down, says we'll have a lot more chances. Don't worry about it. McNair now under center. Trips to the right. One receiver to the left. One man in the backfield along with McNair. Back to pass. Looking, looking. Takes off. Scrambles. Stops. Looks. Throws deep. He's got hit. Oh, right through the hands of Marcus Hinton. Through the hands of Marcus Hinton. 6'6 has just got a little ring rust. He's got a little ring rust. He has not been in the ball game that often, has not played that much down the stretch. I think that's a catch he would have made in the early season. Oh, yes. Steve threw it about 60, 65 yards here on the line at his 40-yard line into the end zone. And, and if 6'6 has a DB on his hip pocket, it's a done deal. Perhaps overshot him just off his tips. We thought McNair would go deep on that first play, and that's exactly what he did. Second down and 10 for Alcorn. Ball resting at the 50. Let's call it the 50-yard line. McNair under center. Trips to the right. Back to pass. Looking, looking. Throws across the middle. It's picked off again by Jackson State. Picked off. Pass intended for Kobe Jenkins. McNair shaking his head. That's Quincy Coleman. And <laughs> look at old Quincy. Is there a chink in the armor? <laughs> this guy's mortal. He knows, he knows he shouldn't have thrown that ball. Coleman made a nice uh, break on the football. Steve uh, looking at his array of targets there. Coleman just cut in front of uh, Jenkins and made a nice play. Nice play by Coleman. You, that was a, truly a nice play by Quincy Coleman. So he has a little trophy to tell the uh, fellas about back on campus. Number nine picked off number nine. Two interceptions for the Tigers today against the Heisman Trophy candidate. JSU at the 45, Asbury takes off. A little quarterback draw, he loves to run that play. He told me yesterday that he loves that play and Alcorn can't handle it. There you see Quincy Coleman. Sweet music by Quincy on that play. Quincy is a freshman defensive back out of Birmingham, Alabama. Alabama, <laughs> where they play a pretty tough brand of football today. Alabama and Auburn going at it in Birmingham this afternoon. Jackson State just inside the 50-yard line. The give is to William Arnold. All up the middle, and all will stop short of the first down. William Arnold has truly been a surprise for Jackson State since the departure of uh, James Johnson. Arnold with two 1,000-yard seasons back-to-back. As you see the graphic there, he's from Atlanta, Georgia. 
Very impressive yards per carry. Almost six yards every time he totes the football. As Asbury to pass. The catch is made by Jerome Young. And he's dragged down from behind by Dupree McGee from Rosedale, Mississippi. But it's enough for a first down. And Jackson State continues to move the football as they try to get back in this game down two touchdowns. And little number 80, 5'8", 160 pound Jerome Young has come up big in this football game, has four catches thus far, making his mark here in a very, very big ball game. Jackson State running the run and shoot. Very seldom will you see a huddle by the Tigers. Arnold in the backfield along with, uh, with uh, Daryl Asbury. Young in motion to give is to Arnold. Arnold up the middle. Look at Arnold go down to about the 11-yard line. Arnold right up the all-four defense cut. And it's a first down at Jackson State approaching Pater. Looks like a brave is down. Certainly looks like the run he made last year just right up the gut with a nice uh, freeway of uh, green in front of him. Finally stopped about the 10-yard uh, line. He told me earlier in the week that he was very disappointed that he didn't get a chance to score against Prairie View. Jackson State ran up 52 points, and Arnold didn't score at all. <laughs> Look at that. Clay already has 100 yards on the day. Impressive. I think we're going to see some uh, record-shattering stats today. There's no question about it. Alante Bell of Alcorn had his bell wrong on that play. He did as the sonic boom of the south warms up. We're going to show you some of that at halftime. First and ten for Jackson State. Asbury throws. There's the fade route to Osborne. Touchdown! It's a touchdown. Jackson State. That's Asbury's favorite play and perhaps his favorite receiver. And we have us a shootout here at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Dupree McGee, number 20, made a fatal error there, turned his back on the football. Osmer came back to the football and made the catch. McGee turned his back and didn't know where his receiver was, and Osmer made an easy catch in the end zone. And seldom does Jackson State players drop the football. Oh, we're getting close here. It's 28-20, pending the outcome of the point after. And Rock Dean is solid as a rock. As a snap, the ball is down, the kick is up, and it is good. Your score now with 6.17 to play in the first half. Alcorn 28, Jackson State 21. You're watching the Capital City Classic on TV3. Welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. For I tell you what, we have us a shootout going here in Jackson, Mississippi. Look at the SWAC standings. You see Grambling is leading the SWAC with a 6-0 record, 9-1 overall. Alcorn State is 5-1, could gain a share of the SWAC crown with a win here over, Gra over Jackson State and a Grambling loss to Southern University. Jackson State comes into this ball game four and two and that is very impressive for Jackson State the Tigers were picked to finish near the bottom as a matter of fact one uh, pick to finish next to Prairie View in the conference JSU that scoring drive took five plays 55 yards or 54 yards with a little over a minute there's a kickoff and it goes to Percy Singleton he's at the 20 he's fast but he's knocked down at about the 24 yard line and that's where the Tigers will operate Otha Evans Jr. on the stop the sophomore from DeKalb High School in Decatur, Georgia. He's played well as he, a Tiger. He certainly has as Steve McNair comes in now. Six minutes to go. Plenty of time for him to put more points on the board for Alcorn State. Alcorn will go with Kobe Jenkins at one receiver. Marcus Hinton and Donald Ray Ross. Tony Bullock in the backfield. And Tim McNair is also in the game for the Braves. So Alcorn going with four receivers on this drive. First and 10 for the Braves at the 24. McNair in the shotgun, looking. Throws it to Bullock. Bullock makes the catch. He's at the 40, slips down, gets back on his feet, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. If there's a new story angle here, it would have to be Tony Bullock, who has not played a, uh, a big role in the other ball games and really came in perhaps as a sleeper because the Braves throw the football so much. But because of the coverage in the secondary, 
The Tigers have used, uh, the Braves rather, have used him and used him well. He's been wide open, swinging out of the backfield. The only other surprise for uh, Alcorn or Jackson State is no surprise, and that is Alcorn will pass the ball. Against Texas Southern, they ran it one time. And against Southern, they ran it, I think, twice. That's McNair out of the shotgun. Look, and he's going deep. He's got 6-6. Six, six. And it's not down, and normally 6'6 six, six would make that catch. Well, he just can't jump off the right foot, and that's where he needed to elevate right there, and he just cannot get up. He uh, limping noticeably as he comes off the football field. Normally, as you say, he'd just go up, bring it right back down. And you see Bo Lewis is talking a lot of trash to 6'6, uh, six, six, saying, hey, I can check you, baby. I can get you. Lewis was in good position there, too. He cut off the uh, from Hinton from getting the football. Needs one touchdown catch to set the all-corn career record. And and, and and not being biased, I, I hope Hinton would get it because he's a nice guy. He's been hurt all season. But back to live action, McNair throws across the field to Gory White. The pass was incomplete, but a flag is down. Led White there just a little bit. Marcus Sinton hopes to rest that uh, stress fracture after the season, getting it in shape for the Senior Bowl, which is January Holding 14th. 10 yards under defense, first and 10. Holding call against Jackson State, so that'll give the Braves a first down in JSU territory. Five minutes, 51 seconds to play in this first half. This has been an exciting first half. Many people on hand to see Steve McNair's last game, perhaps in Mississippi. Big Daddy can't wait to get rid of McNair. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's saying, get him out of here. Big Daddy's hot. He's been hot all game, Clay. I've never seen him this uh, animated. I have not. He, he is truly into this football game. And uh, Look at him. That's been restrained by Carl Roberts, and Carl Roberts is a big man. I think he's, he's received an unsportsmanlike conduct call. A flag is down right in front of Big Daddy. We have an unsportsmanlike act on the bench. 15 yards. First oh, Big 10. Daddy costing his team 15 yards. He sure did. He's got he's got to really he's right, got to get some focus, maintain himself here. You don't want to give this game away at this point. And Robert says, "I'll handle this." Big Daddy certainly upset the big attitude, and he's given Alcorn 15 yards. I don't know what could have made him so upset, but nonetheless, he was upset. Carl Roberts trying to calm him down. We'll try to get the official word from Eddie. Normally, James Carson, not an excitable boy, but in this ball game, man, he's jumping all over the place. Oh, now McNair with the football at the 29-yard line of Jackson State. Hands it off to Bullock. Bullock finds a hole to the outside, and he's knocked down at about the 21-yard line near the first down, maybe a yard shy. Well, their pass just sets up their run. When you're stretched so thin like that in the secondary, it leaves the running lanes open, and you, you get a little gap in that first uh, wall of blockers, and you're off. Nice eight-yard pickup. Jackson State Sonic Boom of the South Marching Band making uh, its way to the field, and I must say I have a niece that's a member of the J Sets, and I must say that. <laughs> well, they'll be making an appearance here shortly. Second down and two yards to go for Alcorn. McNair under center, hands off to Bullock. Bullock slips down, and he will still be short of the first down. I think uh, he slipped again in that painted part of the field where you see the JSU logo is painted between the 20 and 25-yard lines. That's normally not there, and uh, you can see where he slipped down, perhaps because of that. That's actually a trap door. Oh, I see. That's been implemented <laughs> uh, for the ball game. He stepped right into it. The Jackson State coaching staff, a little uh, irate at the moment while Cardio Jones is under control. Third down and two for McNair. He'll back into the shotgun formation. There's a snap. McNair back to pass. He steps up. He loses the tackle. He's off. He's at the 15, 10, 5. McNair knocked out of bounds. Maybe Rob, a late hit. I think he pulled a hamstring there. He pulled up lame about the seven-yard line. I think his left hamstring might have been strained just a bit. He's tough. He's, look, he's holding it. You're right, Clay. Because he, he pulled up just a little bit. Normally, he might take off and try to just uh, leap into the end zone. But as he hits about the five-yard line, you notice something pulled. He really accelerates here out of the backfield. Vintage McNair. Look at him. He's like a ballerina. He really is tough. And watch him here. About right. the eight-yard line, he sure did. You're right. You wonder how much that'll plague him the rest of the way. He does not come out of the football game, but he... 
his scrambling ability may certainly be affected by that. All court, perfect position to score now. Ball at the five-yard line is first and goal. McNair hands it off. It's a touchdown to Ron Harness. Touchdown, Alcorn State. He found a hole on the left side, and it's a touchdown, Alcorn. More points on the board. Sharon Hart has played his high school football at South Pike, a team very much in the state playoff picture in Pike County football. South Pike a winner last night, and Alcorn has stretched it back to two touchdowns as Harness, who was really the hero at the end of that ball game last week against Troy State, has done it again. McNair already over 300 plus yards in the first half, a new Division I AA record. He, he continues to break records. He is sensational. Steve Air to McNair certainly on his way to the National Football League. Meanwhile, the point after is up, and it is good. Alcorn stretches its lead to 35-21. We'll be back. This is the Capital City Classic on TV3. As to fix your car, call me to go after the money you deserve. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium. You saw it on that last touchdown drive. The franchise, Steve McNair, a pulled muscle in his left leg. They're unsure if it's a hamstring or not. He plans on going back in, but it could affect his mobility. Rob, play back up to you. Oh, that would be a big blow if McNair leaves this ball game because Jackson State is still in it. They're not out of it by no means. 35-21, McNair is hurt. No question about it. As you see, Harness scored the touchdown that puts the Braves up 35-21, and they may well ice it down the entire uh, halftime period here as the Braves score on the four-yard touchdown run by Harness. Another drive of under two minutes. Just remarkable. That's the fifth touchdown of the day that's under two minutes. How about that? Allo Squibb kicked to Jackson State. They bobble the ball, but it is controlled by the span man. He's at the 20, 25, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. There's Steve McNair right there. You see him grimace as they wrap that hamstring. Surrounded by a phalanx of cameras here. A little here. circulation in my head. <laughs> and check it out is uh, that ham. As Eddie mentioned, he is the franchise. If, if he's pulled that severely, that's something that that will keep him down for quite some time. Obviously not that severe. It appears that he's, he's up on his feet and plans to be back in the ballgame. The issue may have been flagged for a late hit on that. The officials didn't call his own. First and 10 for the Tigers at the 29-yard line. William Arnold, the A-train, he calls himself. And he's slammed to the turf at about the 32-yard line. Boy, that Alcorn defense is stepping up today, playing hard as we take another look at McNair. Maybe McNair didn't stretch before the ball game. Well, I doubt that. I think he's uh, as finely tuned an athlete as you'll find. Second down and about one yard to go, or actually five yards to go. There's a pass to Mark Walker. It's broken up by the Braves. Excellent coverage by Calvin Robinson, the Jackson kid from Jim Hill arrived just as the ball did and separated the receiver from it. And he's also had an excellent year for Alcorn. Calvin Robinson out of Jim Hill High School here in Jackson. Kenneth Mangrum could not hang on. And that's Special K. <laughs> Special K. Third down and about seven yards to go for Jackson State as you take a look at Asbury. Receivers on each side. Asbury, plenty of time, looking. Now he's flushed out of the pocket and he's going to be sacked. Bryant Mix, who didn't play last year, he said Asbury will know his name today. He's mixing up quite a recipe here for Tiger Destruction. <laughs> Bryant Mix, 6'4 again, 275. And I think with that sack, he has become the, all, the single season team leader on the Alcorn team. And we say congratulations to big Bryant Mix. Give him the title. They grow them tough, they grow them mean in Water Valley. <laughs> this is the first punt of the day. Record this, put it in your memory, the first punt of the day by either team. Harold Jones with the snap, with the kick, and oh, what a nice kick by Jones to White at the 25. White, still on his feet, and he slips down at about the 28-yard line. Maybe the best thing for White to slip down. 
We're inside three minutes and finally a punt. As you see Steve trying to walk off that uh, hammy. Left leg injury. Slightly strained perhaps as the Tigers try to rally here. With just uh, two minutes and 43 seconds left. Now will McNair come into this ball game? Well, actually there is a timeout on the field and we'll take one as well. This is the Capital City Classic on TV3. To you. We're back live at Memorial Stadium. Steve McNair out of the ball game. Andre Credit is in for Big Story Bruin here at Memorial Stadium. Credit is the sophomore from uh, Houston, Texas, as you look at Steve on the sidelines, perhaps just resting it for the second half. Credit, a left-hander, 6'2", out of Willoughby High School in Houston, Texas. And, you know, Credit would start on many teams uh, in the swag. Uh, obviously not here at all for him. Well, they're trying to redshirt Jerry Fletcher, a very capable quarterback for next year. He wants to play his senior year as the starter instead of behind uh, Steve McNair. So that's why you see Credit, the unproven quarterback in the football game. Credit now makes the handoff, and he's knocked down by JSU. He's an option quarterback, does not possess the kind of skills that Steve does. Adequate arm. And now Jackson State can smile, knowing that McNair is not in the ball game. As you mentioned, may be resting McNair for the second half. A minute 47 and counting to go in this first half of play. And look at this, all going in the huddle. And look at Steve McNair on the sidelines. McNair, you know he wants to play against Jackson State, but in his best interest, the coaches are holding him out. Third down for all going third and six to go. Ball at the 33-yard line. Credit, back to pass, looking. Fires a pass down the sideline. It's picked off by Picasso Nelson. Oh, what a mistake Credit just made. I don't know why you want to throw the football in that situation, Rob. Run the clock out, take your 14-point lead into the dressing room, or punt the football. Credit is comes in cold, laid it up there, and it was picked off. And you can charge credit with a turnover. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> this guy is something, isn't he? Jackson State's third interception of the first half. So Jackson State will have the football. We'll have a dead ball. On sportsmanlike, on blue. On sportsmanlike conduct call against the Braves. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Well, Jackson State's going to really have nice field position. As you see, Picasso Nelson pick off that Andre credit pass. Run out of bounds by Jenkins. Nice tackle by Jenkins. But you tack on this penalty, and Jackson State's got a real shot here to get points on the board with 120 to play in the first half. That's Nelson from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. On blue. McNair. Wondering what would have happened had he stayed in that ball game. A lot of turnover so far, and Jackson State can breathe a new life. A minute 20 to go. Let's see how Asbury can run the two-minute offense. We know that man can do it. Thing is, can his counterpart do it? McNair cheers on the defense. Jackson State with it first and 10 at Alcorn's 39-yard line. William Arnold in the backfield. Asbury hands off to Arnold. Arnold up the middle. He's going to be knocked down after about a four or five yard gain. Bryant Mix on, in on the stop with Jermaine Brown as the uh, that Alcorn defense is uh, hunkered down and trying to relive some of those tunnel days on the reservation when the Braves played such great defense under the godfather Marino Chasm. 56 seconds to play and counting. Second down at about six yards to go. Asbury across the middle. It's caught by LaShawn Osmer at the 14-yard line of Alcorn. Now that turnover is looming big for the Braves. Sure is, and a nice play by Osmer there, who caught it in the crowd. You know, Jackson two men, State... Oh, sorry, Clay. Two men converging there as Osmer makes the catch. Jackson State at the 15-yard line. Asbury moving the ball against the Braves. First and 10, Asbury. The fade route again. A man is wide open. Touchdown! Touchdown! Jerome Young from Lanier High School. And we have us a ball game in Memorial Stadium. And that young bulldog is barking. <laughs> it's 35 with a PAT 28. And Steve McNair and his team a little bit concerned here. Jerome Young makes his fifth catch of the first half. And I got to tell you, I don't recall him being such a big part of this football team. I, this is my first time seeing him 
uh, make so many catches against uh, uh, in a game. He made a few catches against Texas Southern. That was my really uh, the first time that he really caught a lot of guys' attention. But he is making some big catches today. And Jackson State is down by seven. As that point after is good. Jerome Young. Wow. Write it down. Number 80. 5'9 and 160. And the Tigers have cut the lead to seven. And Andre Credit gave it up on the interception to Nelson. You wonder how long Credit will stay in the ball game. I suppose they'll probably take a knee here and take the 35-28 lead into the uh, dressing room. Don't or know how trainers will be working on that hamstring. Don't know how serious that hamstring is for Steve McNair, but he must be in this ball game if all for it is to win it. If Credit comes in here, uh, like you mentioned, play, he's cold. Jackson State is not a bad football team. Should be undefeated at this point. But uh, Credit comes in, all four may be in trouble. Well, with Andre Credit, you really have to modify your offense because he's an option player. He's not a drop back, throw it down the football field kind of guy. Alcorn's not in a position after 10 games to suddenly run a new offense in the second half. 34 seconds to play. Alcorn obviously will now just run the clock out. Big, big mistake by the Braves on that last possession as uh, the pass was picked off by Picasso Nelson. Back deep for Alcorn is Gory White along with Percy Singleton and Shalonzo Miller. It goes to White. White at the 15. And he's knocked down at the 20-yard line. Jackson State is fired up. That's Otha Evans <laughs> pumped up here at Memorial Stadium. Look at McNair. A host of Tigers showing their claws before a full house at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. A.C. Butch Lambert Field, the site of this uh, titanic struggle, the 49th meeting of all court at Jackson State, renamed the Capital City Classic, beginning the first of an eight-year run at the Big House in the Capital City. I must say the field is nicely done with the helmets and the logos on each side. Well, Jackson State has a lot of momentum now as they take it to the dressing room. they got to be feeling good as Jerome Young playing the game of his life. Braves now just run the clock out, as you see. Credit. Is there a fumble on the play? If that's a fumble, oh, it's a fumble! It's a fumble! It's a fumble, and Jackson State recovers. Credit fumbles the football, and now we... Oh, my goodness, Alcorn could be in trouble. I'm wondering if Ricky Taylor told him to take a knee and Credit tried. He saw a hole, tried to get some yardage out of it. I cannot understand this... Uh, this offensive thinking here as we close the first half. Jackson State with a chance to tie the football game. Let's see what happened here. Credit saw a hole, took off, and coughed it up. He coughed up the football. Credit. I was about to say, Clay, that with three running backs in the backfield, one man was uh, deep in the backfield. That was a safety valve in case of a fumble. But Credit tried to take off, and it's 23 seconds to go. Big Daddy has new life as McNair goes to the locker room. And Mr. MHP says we'll be back. Oh, my it's goodness. It's not over yet. Jackson State with new life in their deep and all forms territory. If they don't get a touchdown, a field goal, any points uh, would really help Jackson State here as they get the ball back in the second quarter first. You really have to wonder what the offensive coordinator, Ricky Taylor, might have said to his offense there. You, you would imagine he so told him to take the knee and run out the clock. I don't know if credit, because he's unproven, has not played a lot of football, saw a hole, and tried to turn it into a big play or not. But two crucial, pivotal turnovers here to close the first half. You wonder if JSU will go with the fade route. They have about uh, three plays they can run here. If they're all passing. First and 10 from the all 22 Asbury looking, throws in the end zone, the fade route. That's Fan is picked off. Fan stood there and looked at the football while it was picked off by Alcorn's number 24, Dante Dowers. And he saved credit of cutting. Boy, he did. Dowers is the second best cover guy in the Braves secondary. The freshman Eliante Bell, perhaps the best uh, speed and cover man. That's a huge play. Big, big play for Alcorn State. <laughs> Span looking at the football while Dante Dowers stood there and got it. He cut in front of him, made a huge play. 
Dante Dowers, the junior from Bell Glade, Florida. Let, now let's see what credit does. Look at credit. <laughs> credit, will, he'll get a knee now. He may get a knee to the throat when he gets to the <laughs> locker room. Well, he gets the idea now. So the first half will run out a very exciting first half as Alcorn will go into the locker room leading Jackson State by seven points. Your halftime score is Alcorn 35 and Jackson State 28. You're watching the Capital City Classic on TV3 Sports. We are back at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium where Alcorn has taken a 35-28 lead into the intermission in the first annual Capital City Classic, formerly the Soul Bowl after 48 meetings. The sonic boom of the South, the Jackson State University band is on the field. We'll show you that, some of that in just a minute. But first, let's be joined by Dr. James Frank, the SWAC commissioner, and you've got to be pleased at the turnout, the quality of play, and the excitement over SWAC football. This is tremendous, you know. This reminds me of that game between Mississippi Valley and uh, Alcorn back in 1984 when this place was packed, people were sitting in the aisle and so forth. Quite a spectacle. Deja vu just 10 years later. And so yeah. many prospective pros on the field in 84, perhaps some more today. I Certainly, we, Steve I McNair. think we got a few today, yes. McNair, uh, his, a shining light for the conference. What are you feeling now about his Heisman chances? Well, I'm optimistic. Uh, if, if ever, if ever a uh, player deserves it, and obviously I'm, I'm partial, but I think objectively because I feel that the Heisman should go to the best player in the country, and absolutely there's no question that he's the best player in the country. And I know there are those uh, voters who feel that because he plays at this level, he should not get it. And, but uh, I'm op optimistic. These two schools have established the Capital City Classic, which they hope one day will rival the Bayou Classic next week's game in New Orleans. Do you think it has that kind of potential? Absolutely. You know, uh, I was just talking to the former president of Jackson State, and uh, they used to play this game on Thanksgiving Day, and it was a big game just like this, but uh, they stopped it because Alcorn wanted to, they felt that it was too pro-Jackson, pro-Jackson crowd and all, but they're coming back to it, and it definitely has the potential. You're feeling if Alcorn wins the ball game, should they be in the playoffs? Oh, yeah, no question about it, and I think they will be. Does it hurt you that Grambling cannot qualify because they play late, the bids go out on Sunday? Not really. We, we dealt with this question a long time ago when people were saying, we need that automatic berth. We need that automatic berth. But I took it to the presidents, and the presidents, uh, even the schools like Alcorn and the Mississippi schools, decided that the Bayou Classic, the Turkey Day Classic, was just too big to tamper with, and we would give up the automatic berth. And that was give, not giving up much because we've always been invited and we've gotten in that large berth and so forth, so it doesn't bother me. Dr. James Strank, thanks for joining us here at halftime of the Capital City Classic. Without further ado, we want to go to the field for some of that uh, exciting sounds of the sonic boom of the South. The Jackson State University Marching Band will give you some of that feel and soul of this Capital City Classic.
Brad, we thank you for joining us on TV3 this afternoon. Very exciting football game between Jackson State and Alcorn. Your halftime score, Alcorn 35, Jackson State 28. Steve McNair is out with a hamstring injury. Will he be back? We don't know. Well, I tell you, we started off a point a minute. A lot of touchdowns, I think five or six in the first quarter. Steve pulled up lane there later in the first half. Uh, our Ed Fiddler checking downstairs on his availability for the second half. And you really feel sorry for a guy like Andre Credit who came in and maybe just tried to do too much there at the end of the first half. Two crucial turnovers, and Jackson State converted those, uh, at least one of them, into points. And uh, Alcorn has just a seven-point lead at the break. We might want to show them those highlights. Let's give you a overview of what happened in the first half. That's Steve McNair back to pass. And the first touchdown of the day was this nice strike to Donald Ray Ross for the touchdown. Alcorn had taken a 7-0 lead. Then following a Jackson State turnover, Sharon Harness went in for the touchdown. Alcorn had taken a 14-0 lead, and the Braves looked to blow JSU right out of their own stadium. But Darrell Asbury came back, and he threw a strike right here to Jerome Young, 18 yards. Jackson State had trimmed the lead to 14-7. But McNair, the McNair to McNair connection occurred then. Steve McNair hit older brother Tim. That get him go for the touchdown. 21-7 Alcorn. Big Daddy was a little bit upset. Asbury would then run it in. His favorite play, the quarterback draw. Jackson State cut the lead to 21-14. He gave McNair a little in your face. But McNair would hurt himself on this play right here. They say it's a hamstring. We don't know how severe it is right now. He didn't come back after that play. Thus, Jackson State would score a touchdown, and the Braves now lead only by seven points. Well, you, you know Jackson State wants to beat Alcorn at full speed. They don't want to see McNair on the bench. They want to beat Alcorn straight up. <laughs> I tell you, Steve McNair has inspired a lot of records and songs and all kind of stuff. He's become a folk hero in Mississippi. And when two guys from Alcorn, seniors, showed up at our studio earlier this week with a rap song about Air McNair. Here's uh, the latest on that, and these two young men who raised $150 to get this song recorded. We'll give you just a little listen to that. Here's the sights and sounds. I don't need to clown, and I'm never running my mouth. I just run for a touchdown. Now all the newspapers write my name. I'm that kid who got over 600 yards in, in a single, single game. game. He's put up the numbers year in and year out, and he deserves the publicity, and he deserves that trophy. Huh. Hand of the high. Hand him the Heisman is a takeoff on the Sports Illustrated cover which declared early this season McNair was worthy of the trophy. The lyrics were inspired by James Brown. Alcorn senior Lamumba Moses and his classmate John Jackson were driving back to school from Port Gibson three weeks ago and the creative juices began to flow. We started, um, we call it freestyling. Uh, we started doing that and coming up with lyrics and we put them together and came up with a song. This is why you're driving? Yes, while we were driving back from Port Gibson. It, the whole process took maybe about 30 minutes. So by the time you hit campus, you had it? We had a song. The next step was recording the two solicited funds from Alcorn students, faculty, and alumni, and raised the necessary $150 to get in the studio. The strongest arm in the swag, running over defensive players, almost as if he was a running back. Don't want to give a trophy to him. Why? Who else do you know, God? They can't throw 70 yards on the fly with that. His efforts haven't gone unnoticed by myself and Lumumba and the rest of Alcorn fans all over the country because they know that Steve has done a spectacular job. Steve and the team have given the song their blessing. The performers only hope the national media and Heisman voters will get on McNair's bandwagon as well. We know Cook, take a look at the record books. Uh, he could go all the way. The Heisman Trophy presentation is December 10th in New York City. If Air McNair gets the trophy, two of his friends back home will know they did their part as well. The Jackson State University marching band known as the Sonic Boom of the South all over the nation just finishing up their performance. Coming up next, the Alcorn State University marching band called the Sounds of Dynamite. This is the Capital City Classic on TV3 Sports. Stay with us. Welcome back to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium for the inaugural Capital City Classic. You see the sounds of dynamite marching band of Alcorn State University. Let's go to Ed Fiddler now. Before we take a break and to go with Fiddler, we'll take a listen to the Alcorn marching band. Oh, 
welcome back. Sights and sounds of the sounds of dynamite. Those soulful swag bands. Uh, hey, we installed three extra cameras just for the halftime because ESPN2 <laughs> wasn't going to give it to you. And this is a very important part of swag football. Oh, yeah. You know, the band rivalry is as big as the football game. So Alcorn's band won. I'll do Jackson State's band and vice versa. Who do you so, think won? Jackson State. Oh, listen to that. That's, that's JSU blood coming out. Here. More swag <laughs> football on WLBT right after this. Stay with us. Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium as Alcorn uh, concludes its uh, halftime presentation here before a full house at A.C. Butch Lambert Field. Jackson State uh, back on the field and ready to play some football as Alcorn concludes a thrilling halftime presentation here and there they go. And as Rob, as you said, the bands are so important to these schools. Oh, most definitely. I was talking to some of the band members from Alcorn earlier in the week, and they were telling me uh, some of the routines they had planned for Jackson State and some of the songs that they had planned to uh, uh, play tonight and Jackson State, vice versa, telling me about uh, some of the routine they were going to plan for Alcorn. So they planned for this game with this, uh, these two bands earlier in the season. So that game plan and that strategy is just as important as uh, what Big Daddy and Cardell Jones cook up. Oh, exactly. No doubt about it, as Cardell would say. You know, I don't want to throw a monkey around into the thing here but Southern University I got a chance to see their band earlier in the year and they are outstanding and Jackson State held their own the sonic boom of the south doing a nice job and the sounds of dynamite finishing up here uh, at halftime as Alcorn uh, leads at 35 28 just the kind of game we expected just the kind of game you expected Jackson State runs the uh, run and shoot offense Alcorn's defense has been a little uh, I guess near the bottom as far as uh, uh, the SWAC uh, defensive stats goes, and Jackson State just licking their chops to play that all-court defense, and it tells by the scoreboard. Of course, the story we're waiting to uh, update for you is the Steve McNair saga. He uh, went out of bounds in the first half, late first half, pulled a hamstring. We're not sure how severe that is at this point. And we understand that McNair has a slight pulled hamstring. We just got the word that he will play in the second half. How mobile he will be is yet to be determined. Our crack staff right on top of that one here as we're about ready to resume action in the uh, second half. Looks like a drawing here at uh, midfield. And, uh, Rob, as we've talked about, a very tightly contested race here in the SWAC. Uh, Grambling on top has defeated Jackson State, has defeated Alcorn in the season opener. The Tigers are very tough, but they cannot go to the playoffs because they play that Bayou Classic next week. The playoff bids are extended on Saturday. Alcorn has a chance to tie the Tigers if they win today, and uh, Grambling would lose uh, next week against the uh, Southern Jaguars. James Carson brings his team in here today at 7-3, and three, a chance at uh, really a 10-0 season. Lost uh, three games by a uh, very slim margin. He's 19-12-1 after taking over for W.C. Gordon, who was uh, highly successful on uh, Lynch Street. James Carson, who's been uh, quite animated. What do you think's gotten in? His fire is burning. Man, I'm telling you, he wants to beat Alcorn. This Jackson State team want to beat Alcorn. Like Mississippi Valley wants to beat Jackson State, Jackson State wants to beat Alcorn. And uh, I guess Big Daddy is just pumped for this game. He said he had his game face on last night. He's pumped for it, you can tell. Really reminded me of that emotion we saw last week. Mississippi State and Alabama really selling out. I mean, giving everything they had to knock off the Crimson Tide, and it didn't happen. Uh, we'll see what happens here in the second half. Repeating our uh, top story, if you will, Steve McNair with a slightly pulled hamstring. That's correct? That's correct. But he will play in the second half. Now, as we as we said, how mobile he will be is yet to be determined. May uh, pull uh, put the favor in uh, Jackson State's uh, side of the field right now with McNair slightly injured, not 100%. We'll see what happens in the second half. Cardell Jones uh, has done a, an excellent job at Alcorn, 30-11-2 during his stay, including one SWAC championship. He's an Alcorn grad. Both of these coaches doing it for their alma mater today. Cardell and Alcorn graduate James Carson from Jackson State. 
And we understand Mr. Fiddler is standing by live with one of the principals in tonight's affair. Let's go downstairs and see what he has to say. Well, uh, we are awaiting uh, the arrival of Alcorn coach Cardell Jones. I talked to the team physician. He did say that uh, McNair will play. You have to wonder what kind of mobility McNair will have with that pulled hamstring, whether slightly pulled or not. Certainly, it will affect uh, his maneuverability, the way his cuts and so forth. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, McNair will play. And uh, he was an obvious pain when the injury occurred in the first half. I saw him sitting on the bench. He was grimacing. He was in severe pain. I'm sure they iced it down, uh, massaged the leg at halftime uh, to try and get uh, McNair uh, to full speed. Of course, a, a barn burner here at Memorial Stadium. It's going to be a great second half. That could be a pivotal factor in how this ball game turns out. McNair's uh, maneuverability against the Blue Bengals defense still awaiting Coach Cardale Jones as the Braves continue to file out uh, for the second half of the ball game. And uh, again, Coach Jones is making his way onto the field now. We'll have a quick interview with him momentarily. 35-28 to Jackson State. Uh, and here comes Coach Cardale Jones. Coach, everyone wants to know what's the McNair status. Well, he 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 ready to come back the second half and play. He just had a muscle strain just a little bit, but um, I'm sure he will come back and play the second half. So it's not a hamstring. I said hamstring, a muscle, yeah, yeah hamstring. What's the key to victory, coach, in the second half? Well, we just got to go and do a better job of executing. Uh, we were just a little too benevolent. We turned the ball over entirely too much the second half and play with more intensity the second half. Thank you, coach. Good luck to you. Thanks for joining us, Alcorn coach Cardell Jones. Back up to you, Robin Clark. Thank you very much, Ed Fiddler. We'll be back with second half action here at Mississippi for Veterans Memorial Stadium. All court on top of the Tigers. 35-28, back in a moment. It's at one eight. As we start the kickoff of the second half, Jackson State will receive the football, and that's Greg Spann. Look at Spann go as he gets it across the 30-yard line, and that's where Jackson State will start at first and 10 for the Tigers. Repeating once again, Steve McNair with a slightly pulled left hamstring late in the first half. Assuming he had it iced down, he came out limping slightly as Asbury cranks his team up here 12 of 15 in the first half. So Jackson State will operate from their own 34-yard line. Asbury, your quarterback, William Arnold in the backfield. Mark Walker, one of your receivers, as well as LaShawn Osmer, Greg Spann in the slot formation. Asbury looking. Has a man open, but he overthrows LaShawn Osmer down the right side. Osmer had a step on the all-court defensive back, Eliante Bell, and they have a lot of confidence in Bell, number 21, the best cover guy for the Braves. There's your 16-team field in the 1AA playoffs. That will be announced, uh, as you see, tomorrow. Alcorn uh, quite hopeful of an invitation should they lasso the Tigers here today. Second down and 10 for Jackson State. Young in motion to the right. That's Asbury. Drop back. Sees the opening. Fires a pass to Osmer, but the officials ruled it was incomplete. Osmer is upset, saying he caught the football. Had a hand on it, might have trapped it there against the ground. Uh, one double-A playoff first. Five are already in the house. That's Eastern Kentucky, Marshall, North Texas, Northern Iowa, and Youngstown State, your top-ranked team in the country. And many uh, theorizing here that uh, if Big Daddy and his team cannot defeat Alcorn today, the Braves would be headed to Youngstown for their first playoff game. We'll have to see how that develops. Third and 10 now for Jackson State. Asbury operating out of the shotgun. Pressure is on, and he is going to be sacked by the Alcorn Braves. Sidney Middleton out of Moss Point. The traditionally uh, powerful Tigers in Sydney's pump. And they're getting to Asbury here in this ball game this afternoon. Well, you got to figure Alcorn's got to step up now. Step up its defensive effort because Steve may not be 100% the rest of the way. So they've got to make some stops. So Cedric Dunbar, whose family all graduated from Alcorn State, will do the punting for Jackson State. 
bad punt there, but a nice roll for the Tigers. Gory White will pick it up. He's at the 30. White has a little room, but he's going to be snuffed down by Opa Evans. What a hit by number 10 of Jackson State. Gory White's an exciting player, boy. He's going <laughs> to pick it up every time if he can, whether it's inside the five or the 50. He wants to return the football. As you see, Steve McNair make his way onto the field for the first drive of the third quarter. And you could just see the all-point coaches hold their breath when Gory White touches the football. But McNair is in the ball game. How mobile will he be? We'll find out on this drive. First and 10 for the Braves at their own 33-yard line. McNair with the hand signals. He'll be operating with trips to the left. One receiver to the right, a man in the backfield. McNair in the shotgun, back to pass. Plenty of time, looking, throws. He's got a man that's gone away Ross, but he's short of the first down. It'll be second down and about two yards to go. McNair straightening his wristbands. He's got a wristband around his neck and his ankles and his arms. And he's ready. I guarantee you that left hamstring is uh, taped fully. As you can see the little crease in his, uh, in his pants on the left leg there. Second down, and about two yards to go, a long one for the first down. McNair under center, hands it off to the first man through, and he breaks it in for the first down, and he nears midfield. That's Tony Bullock of McGee, Mississippi, home of the McGee Trojans. Bullock's come up big today. He obviously said uh, early in the week that he was going to play a big role here today with Jackson State secondary uh, covering well. Robert Hinton comes into the game for Alcorn State while Marcus Hinton, no relation, goes out. First and 10 for the Braves at the 48-yard line. McNair again in the shotgun. Fires downfield. There's a man, Kobe Jenkins. Oh, through the hand of Kobe Jenkins. He had a step on Bo Lewis and McNair. Oh, can't like that. Jenkins is down. I would imagine he's knocked the, knocked the wind out. As he extended his body there about the five-yard line to try to haul that one in. That's Bo Lewis on the coverage. Lewis has an interception today as uh, the Braves go back to the drawing board on second and ten. Boy, you can't, uh, you can't put it no better than that. Right on the money, but right through the hands of Kobe Jenkins. Gave it the old college try. And Jenkins is still down on the football field. And he's lifted to his feet. He'll take a little break. Jackson State making a few changes on defense as Chad Ford goes out. And Corden Sledge comes in for the Tigers. Another look at that pass from McNair. Chad Ford was really excited last night. He's a freshman. I said, you're going against a senior and Steve McNair. And he said, you know, these are the kind of games you live for. I've lived in this town, went to Provine High School. I want to play and I want to beat him. Meanwhile, McNair back to the air, intended for Glory White, pass a little bit long, but it'll bring up uh, a third down situation. Rob, this reminds me of last year when Steve really had very little mobility in the final games of the 93 season, and he is not, uh, he's not been scrambling around. He stayed in the pocket, tried to throw out of there, and what is that? Are we calling E.T.? Big Daddy's calling the extraterrestrial. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Third down and 10 for the Braves. McNair out of the shotgun. Looking. Plenty of time throws across the middle. And it's knocked down by JSU. Andre Taylor, a freshman out of Seattle, Washington. So that'll bring up a fourth down and ineffective drive for McNair. And he continues to limp there. And I don't think we're going to see the kind of scrambling ability that he uh, showed us exhibited in the first half. Chris Castro back to punt. Chris Castro. Coach is a little disappointed in the way he's been punting this season. Punt almost blocked, but he got off a nice one. As Osmer is immediately hit on the catch. Osmer didn't call a fair catch. Boy, he's a tough little guy. You see McNair, Jackson State trails by seven. They've got the football and we'll be back. This is the We're back at the Morgan Stadium and Jackson State scored all for 35. Jackson State 28. 
We're just underway in the second half of play. JSU with the football. Jerome Young in motion. As Dale Asbury calls the play. A little pass to William Arnold. Out of the backfield. Arnold may go. Arnold at the 40. Still on his feet to midfield. What a run by William Arnold into Alcorn territory. He's a little spark plug. You know, when he made his appearance on Sports Journal last week, he told us he weighed 121 pounds. <laughs> he did quickly correct it and say 181. He moves uh, quite well. Nice pass by Asbury to Arnold, and this was all William Arnold on this play. Rob, we would be remiss if we didn't mention Alcorn injured linebacker Alan Ray Haynes, who's been out for the season after breaking his neck. We know he's watching tonight, looking in from Prentice, and the Alcorn defense has given up 400 yards per game in his absence as opposed to the 250 when he was playing. Brave showing blitz first down. Jackson State and Alcorn's 47-yard line. Asbury will take the handoff. Look at Asbury go. He's at the 30, and he's knocked down. The ball pops loose, but they're going to say it was down. The ground cannot cause a fumble, and the ball was down, and it looks like Asbury is as well. Yeah, he'll be all right. We've just been handed the halftime stats as you look at Daryl Asbury on the uh, little two-step, three-step drop and take off. Obviously, they think this is a very productive play, and uh, Asbury's proven to, to pull it off quite well. Yeah, he was down. He was down. Asbury is playing. He's a fifth-year senior, but uh, with the experience, he's like a freshman. Jackson State calls a timeout, 11.51 to go. We'll call a timeout as well. This is the Capital City Classic on TV3. Graduated from Jackson State and now the defensive coordinator at Alcorn, <laughs> Jerry Rice, Mississippi Valley alum. He started this thing. He did the indeed. The stadium is packed. The lad, like you mentioned, uh, not as packed uh, as it was when Alcorn played Mississippi Valley back in 1985. 84 it was. But nevertheless, a packed stadium here in Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson State on the move, looking to tie the ball game. Ball resting at the 29-yard line of Alcorn State. Asbury in the shotgun. There's the snap. Asbury looking. Pressure. Throws it down the field. It's picked off again in the end zone. Picked off by Alcorn. That's Ben Carter with the reception. Asbury overshot his man. Triple coverage there for the Braves as they try to go to Greg Spann. Jackson State blew a golden opportunity here. Asbury dropping it, looking mix, rushes him at the last second. He throws into triple coverage, and it was picked off by Carter. The young man from Macomb also hails from South Pike. Asbury is upset, and well, he should be. He's talking it over with fans. Those two going at it now. This Maybe. is a big game for Jackson State. Maybe telling Span he ran the wrong route. <laughs> so McNair again operating out of the shotgun. Trips to the left, one receiver to the right. There's a snap ball at the 20. McNair steps up, throws. Ball is complete. The catch is made by Tim McNair, Steve's older brother. Well, maybe we're seeing McNair at his best. He, he cannot throw off his plant foot, which is his left foot. He can't scramble, and yet he's throwing the ball on the line here. He'd like to plant with that left foot and push off, but he can't. Look at him. He's pushing off the right foot and still getting it where it needs to go. Oh, what a strong arm this guy has. Tim McNair, one of the biggest surprises for all four this season. Braves at the 44. McNair again in the shotgun. There's a the throw. Ball is dropped by Tony Bullock. So that'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Braves. As you take a look at the Jackson State offensive unit. Thirty-five twenty-eight to score here at Mississippi Memorial Stadium. 
And this just in from Birmingham, Ed Fiddler's alma mater, Alabama, has knocked off unbeaten once tied Auburn 21 14 year final can you believe that meanwhile McNair goes up top he's got a man but the pass is a little bit too long the fans are calling for pass interference the pass was intended for Robert Hinton out of Callaway High School here in Jackson but defended well by Quincy Coleman how about that Alabama well they had the tremendous comeback last week to knock off the Bulldogs as you see Steve looking deep for Mr. Hinton, who made a huge, huge catch of that Southern ball game down to the one-yard line that set up the McNair one-yard sneak as the Braves uh, maintain their perfect record at Jack Spink Stadium just several weeks ago. Meanwhile, Hinton goes out, and there's going to be a flag on the play. Apparently, an all-court offensive lineman moved over on that left side. That'll push the Braves back five more yards. And that'll make it third down at about 15 yards to go. As we take the official word from the official. We have a dead ball. False start. Offense. Third down. Third down and 15. Let's see what happened on that play. That's number 71 on the left. Look at that guy. He's dancing. Kawan Robinson <laughs> was the guilty party. Cardell can't like that. Have another uh, delay here. Boy, that's on them. On big, uh, Five yard penalty. Looks like it's going to be against Robinson again. Quite a contrast to the start of the ball game. Very out of sync here in the second half for both teams. So all four backed up five more yards. Third down and long for the Braves. McNair in the shotgun. McNair looking. Fires it across the field and a little bit too long for the intended receiver. That was Kobe Jenkins trying to make the catch. So it'll be a fourth down for all corner. They'll have to punt it to Jackson State. Can the Braves defense step up again and stop the Tigers? Well, we can sit here and say it's not the Steve, the same Steve McNair that we've seen much of the season. Lacks the mobility and perhaps the, the leg strength that he needs to shove off with that left foot. That one sailed wide, but as soon as we say that, he'll do something unbelievable in the closing seconds. Castro with a low dying coil kick. Osmer backs out of the way and it's down by Gory White at about the 28-yard line. So that's where Jackson State will operate. We'll take a break. Your score, all for 35, Jackson State 28. This is the Capital City Classic on TV3. And we're back at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium, the inaugural Capital City Classic. The 16th ranked Alcorn Braves against Jackson State. The Braves lead it 35-28 with Jackson State. Trying to tie this ball game up. They had it first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Darrell Asbury is your quarterback, and he's had a, a nice game today despite throwing two interceptions. Asbury in the shotgun, and the play clock is down to zero. The Tigers look confused on that play, and they'll be flagged for five yards. We have delay on the offense, five yards. First down. JSU moving in the wrong direction. As Big Daddy saying, gosh, guys, get it right. Well, maybe, gosh, guys, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I think Big Daddy took a pill at halftime. Looks like he's ready to settle in for a good second half here. More, more composed. Ball at the 22-yard line for JSU. Asbury, again in the shotgun. Looking, he'll take off. Can't find anything. The ball is fumbled, but Asbury is there to pick it up. Oh, my, what a disaster that would have been for Jackson State. Had all four fell on the football. These guys are running with the ball uh, in one hand. You know, and it's easy to flick that ball out. Well, especially a quarterback who's looking at so many different things and trying to make something happen here. And number 51 on the stop for the Braves, Carlos Thornton, the sophomore from Greenville, Mississippi, trying to pick up the slack for the injured Alan Ray Haynes. Second down, 21 yards to go. All court. 
Looks like they're in disarray. Jackson State barely gets the snap off. That pass is long, maybe picked off. Almost picked off as Asbury was going for Osmer. That pass was broken up by Alante Bell, who has a broken right hand, I do believe. And he's still, he's still in the ball game. He's a baseball player with a 3.6 great one. How about that? Well-rounded student athlete. <laughs> we hear so much about the guys who sometimes sit out, don't make their grades. There's a case of a freshman excelling on the uh, collegiate level in the classroom and the field. Asbury going deep. He's got Osmer. Oh, and it's tipped again by number 21, Bell. I'm surprised they're throwing it, Bell, because early on, teams learn that the freshman can cover the football and can check his man, but they have decided that uh, maybe in a big ball game, the young kid will blow up. Jackson State has excellent receivers, and this catch was almost made by LaShawn Osmond. Certainly doesn't have the, the height and the, the reach that you want, but uh, a very good possession receiver who can make some big plays. Dunbar with the punt. A booming kick for Jackson State. They've been doing that all season. Gory White with the football. Watch it. He may put it on the ground, but he gets near midfield. A flag is on the play. Hold everything. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. A flag is down. As you take a look at Steve McNair entering the ball game, let's see what this call is on or who this call is on. Looks like it may be against the boys. A legal block, a legal block in the back on the receiving team, 10 yard challenge, first and 10. Illegal block on uh, blue. You know, uh, the, the code words for the refs, white, red, blue. But, you know, they're wearing purple, Clay. How can it be blue when they're wearing purple? <laughs> well, some have said the SWAC officials have been colorblind, have been uh, in need of some uh, <laughs> ophthalmologic uh, care. No sitting down on the job today in this one. That's Harry Brown. He's uh, played defense as well for Alcorn. The Braves needed a little speed on defense, and they recruited Harry Brown. They also needed some speed last week, and one of the guys asked for Steve McNair. Speaking of, McNair, oh, he's hit hard from the back. McNair sacked by Corey Sledge. He took a shot right there. He planted his helmet in the lower part of his back. He's feeling that one. Oh, my. You very seldom do you see McNair go down like that. Rarely do you see him take a big hit because he is so elusive. But he didn't see Mr. Sledge coming who dropped the hammer on him. <laughs> Some say McNair has eyes in the back of his head, but not on that play. Second down, 19 to go. McNair fires a pass across the middle. Oh, Bo Lewis hit 6-6, six, six, and Bo Lewis is down. 6-6 six, six got right back up, Bo Lewis is stung. <laughs> Bo Lewis thought we were playing mythological football. He almost beheaded 6-6, six, six, but it was Hinton who jumped up and is ready to go again. Oh, 6-6 six, six is a big boy. 238 pounds, six foot six out of Wiggins. Stone County High School. That I believe that's Hinton's first catch of the day. And Ooh, oh my goodness, he hit. laid the pads to him. Oh. McNair, meanwhile, in the shotgun again. Looking, throws down the middle. Pass is incomplete and a flag is down. That's going to be against Jackson State's number 23, Richard Jenkins. Rob, I had my ISO glasses on on that play and watch Jenkins as he cradled Kobe Jenkins across the middle and watch his hand. He's grabbing him though. See, he tugged him, he tugged him, he got off. The official saw it. He was pulling on that jersey because uh, Jenkins had a lot of room to run there across the middle. Richard Jenkins from East St. Louis, Illinois. We have pass East interference St. Louis. on the defense. For that pass interference. First and ten. Meanwhile, Lauren Gavin goes out for Jackson State. Rob, at some time today, we've had three freshmen playing in the Jackson State secondary against the savvy of a Steve McNair, the Heisman Trophy candidate. And JSU has already been flagged nine times for 85 yards, while Alcorn has been flagged only four times. Steve McNair will operate. The ball is at the 49-yard line. 
trips to the left. McNair in the shotgun. Back to pass. Throws down the sideline. He's got a man. And the ball is knocked away by Quincy Coleman. Ball was underthrown, at least to the outside receiver. Perhaps he was going for the middle man on that left-hand side. Ross tried to make the catch and uh, tried to come back for it. He could not haul it in. You see here. Though Ross stopped running here. It was just knocked away at the last second by Quincy Coleman. Nice play by Quincy. Second down and 10 for Alcorn State. No one has scored in this second half. Big contrast from the first half. McNair again, back to pass, throws across the middle. That's Tim McNair, his older brother, for the first down, and the Braves are on the warpath. Tim McNair, we call his name, seems like every minute and a half, leads the club in receptions. Ricky Taylor calling the shots. He has 12 TD catches in 94. Just another in a long line of McNair's at Alcorn State University. Well, Fred was air one. And Steve is air two. And he's in the shotgun. There's a flag down. McNair may have a free play. Ball just through the hands of Tim McNair, but we'll have to wait and see who the penalty is on. These teams marched it up and down the field in the first quarter, in the second quarter. But in the third quarter, things have seemed to slow down just a little bit. You see a little tiger fan. Repeat, first down. Jackson State called for offsides, and that'll give Alcorn a first and five. You see the lovely Miss JSU, or Miss, I'm sorry. Is that, that's Miss JSU. She's holding an Alcorn pom-pom. Well, you're like the SWAC official. You're seeing blue when you ought to be seeing purple. <laughs> Big Daddy. First and five for the Alcorn Braves. McNair out of the backfield to Tony Bullock. Bullock down to the 14-yard line, but he fumbles the ball. It's Jackson State's football. I didn't see it pop out. These two teams are playing sloppy ball in the season finale. Andre Taylor comes up with a pigskin. And the Tigers stemmed the tide as Bullock was running unabated down the right-hand side, inside the JSU 20-yard line. Bullock has not been covered all day long. He's running free. Comes to, oh, there's the big hit by Picasso Nelson, and Taylor gets the deflection. That's why you do the tip drill in practice. <laughs> Back to live action. That's Maul Hampton from Murrah High School. I think that's his first carry. I think so, Clay. First carry, McNair looks bewildered as Jackson State is hanging in this ball game. They're only down by seven. Jackson State had three more minutes of uh, possession in the first half, and that's the kind of football game they want to play here. If they can convert a long drive for a touchdown and tie it up and keep the football away from all four. Second play of the drive at second down and six for the Tigers. The fake pitch to Hampton. Asbury rolls to his left. He's got a man. That's Jerome Young. Young with the catch down to the 40-yard line. First down and 10 for Jackson State. Young from Lanier High School making his presence felt in this Capital City Classic. Young is going to have a lot of groupies around the locker room tonight. <laughs> he certainly is. An excellent nice game. Catch. He's tough. Young, the sophomore, out of Lanier, as we mentioned. Now Jackson State with trips to the right. One receiver to the left. That's Gregory Spann. One man in the backfield, Maurice Hampton. And a flag is down and hold everything. Maybe on JSU. We have a dead ball. Ball start. Illegal procedure against the Tigers. Five big yards. And they're moving the wrong direction. Look at that guy. He obviously didn't get a chance to go to the barber. <laughs> you wonder why the play has disintegrated a little bit here in the second half. Uh, a lot of flags. First down, 15 for Jackson State. The ball on its own 35-yard line. The handoff. Tough running there for Mo Hampton. He gets nothing. Alcorn's defense stepping up in the second half. And Coach uh, Kirksey told me that that defense will step up in the second half, will stop teams when it has to. 
You wonder if these two clubs may be hyperventilated in the first half because of the breakneck style of offense and the number of points scored. Trying to get their bearings here in the second half. We have a man down for Jackson State. Don't, don't quite know who that is, but I think uh, Hampton rolled up on the back of his legs, and that's the, uh, the thing offensive lineman must face when the running back is running uh, right up the middle. You see right there, Hampton. Oh, my goodness. Roll right up on the back leg of Keith Bradshaw. Hope he's okay. The offensive linemen, they have it tough going when a running back runs up the middle and they can't see to get out of the way. He's the senior from Laurel and Rob. I think we've got an attendance figure. 62,512 here tonight. That's near capacity. I thought it was 62-5 when they had the bleachers in the end zone. <laughs> now they're gone and we still got 62-5. <laughs> There you take a look at the all corn sounds of dynamite, one of the best marching bands in the land. And by the way, that was Miss ASU, not Miss JSU. I'm thinking that uh, Jackson State is on the home side, but they're on the visitor side. This is the visitor's game tonight. Jackson State, the visitor. Second and 15 for the Tigers. Walker in motion, Asbury back to pass. The rush is on, Brad Mix mixes it up. And Sachs Asbury. All oh, corner all blitzing there. Mick shot through there like a speeding bullet. Marcus Colley was also uh, coming from the right-hand side, number 37. He tied up the Braves, tied up the Tiger blocking scheme, and Mix lowered the boom. Colley, number 37, is known as Spit. <laughs> uh, He's I'm a gritty kind of player. <laughs> going to say I'm not going to ask you why. It'll bring up a third down and 25 for Jackson State. Asbury, plenty of time, plenty of time. Rolls. He's got Green in front of him. He's at the 25-30 now. Quickly, he's knocked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. So that'll bring out the punting team as the Braves went into that prevent defense. JSU nowhere near the first down. Look at this crowd on hand here tonight. You know, you wonder, looking at this game, you wonder what's going to happen to Alcorn next year when there is no McNair jumping the gun, you know. I know they don't want to mention that, but what's going to happen to the Braves when McNair is lo no longer there and Jackson State will have virtually everyone back? That's a good point. Rory White, he likes to catch it on the run. White. And he is trampled at the 36-yard line. 5.24 to go in the third quarter. Jackson State trails by seven. This is the Capital City Classic. We're back at the Capital City Classic in Jackson, Mississippi. The season finale for both teams. Let's go downstairs with Ed Fittler. Yeah, guys, uh, offensive lineman Keith Bradshaw, a twisted knee. Jackson State trainers say he will be back. He's not going to miss this one. Back upstairs. Thank you, Eddie, and I know he is gleaming about Alabama. <laughs> I wonder if he's gotten the word. <laughs> Alabama unbeaten and untied. Boy, they I'll make rank a Alabama case. number one, baby. They make a case for the national championship. McNair having an excellent day today, although he's hampered with a slight hamstring pull. There's a draw play to Bullock. Bullock with big yards on the play. Bullock inside Jackson State's territory. When that play works, it's beautiful. The little wrap around the delayed draw. And when a guy sniffs it out, boy, it can lose up to 10 yards. But uh, Bullock was, again, you'd think the Tigers would make some adjustments there to, to take him out of the game a little bit. But I guess with the four wideouts, you just don't have any room to spare, any players to spare to put a hat on a hat. Exactly right. As you mentioned, Alcorn loves to spread that defense out. Trips to the left now. One man to the right. Ball at the 43. McNair back to pass. McNair looking, looking, throws. He's got a man, Kobe Jenkins. Puts a move on Bo Lewis. And a little move. Oh, he almost broke that tackle and took it in. But Kobe Jenkins takes it down inside the 20-yard line. Jump rope making a big play there. <laughs> and almost jump roping his way into the end zone as he, uh, he got away from one Tiger defensive player. 
McNair is just excellent with the touch pass. He is brilliant. I love to see him play. I don't think we realize how big of a thrill it is to have watched Steve McNair during his career at Allport State University. Again, over 400 yards today, tying another record. Ball at the 19-yard line. McNair in the shotgun. McNair throws. He's got a man. It's caught by Donald Ray Ross. He slips a tackle. Ross out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Alcorn threatening to put more points on the board. You know, Donald Ray Ross, he, he broke his sternum in the game against uh, Tennessee Chattanooga, I do believe, and he's been playing tentative uh, since that ball game. But tonight, he is stepping up and making some big catches for Alcorn. Well, he has a, the uh, team lead with four touchdowns in one ball game. Has been a, a reliable guy, 6'1", 175 out of Port Gibson. Just a stone's throw from the Alcorn campus down Highway 61. Ball resting on the 10-yard line. Alcorn inside the red zone. It was not enough for a first down. It'll be second down and one, and McNair may sneak this one in. Well, he hands it off to Bullock. Bullock trapped in the backfield. Bullock. The thing about Bullock, uh, the coaches... They don't like the way he runs east and west. He's not a north-south runner. You can tell by that play. Well, you're pulling out your Jackie Sherrill glossary there <laughs> with that north-south runner. <laughs> Good point. Bullock tried to uh, turn the corner, had nothing, and just kept on uh, losing ground. It's like a uh, loss of about four. That's how close they are to the goal line as Alcorn looking to put up more points. McNair in the shotgun. It's third down and five. McNair. Throws. He's got a man, but the ball is a little bit too low for Donald Ray Ross, and will bring up a fourth down for the Braves. McNair didn't run in that situation. Well, he, he makes that play, uh, I think, without that little bugaboo. Maybe a bad throw, but it, uh, he had Ross a good two steps behind his man and just it threw it into the turf. So David Takana will come on to attempt a field goal for the Braves as long as the season is 42 yards. This will be about a 32-yard attempt for Jacana. There's the snap. The ball is down. The kick is up. It's on the way. It is good. And the Braves increase their lead to 38-28. It's 344 left to play in the third quarter. All court up by 10. You're watching the Capital City Classic being brought to you by TV3. Tucks and tails on the sideline. Of that guy's almost stadium. as clean as you, Clay. Hey, this is the place to be, no question about it. This stadium is rocking. It's the home of the Braves tonight. The Alcorn Braves moved uh, their game from Norman, Mississippi to uh, be played here in Jackson, and I think uh, it worked out economically for the Braves. Boy, that's for sure. That's a nice payday to these two teams. The home team, Alcorn, takes 60% of the gate tonight, JSU 40. They swap that arrangement next year and then 50-50 after that. And Greg Spann will field the kickoff inside the 5. Spann at the 30, Spann at the 40, Spann at the 45, still on his feet and knocked down at midfield. Spann inside Alcorn's territory. He's one of the fastest men on Jackson State's team along with Darrell Asbury. So Jackson State now, nice field position to start this drive. Excellent return by Spran and a uh, brainy tackle by the Braves as uh, Greg Spann is upended on his head after he leaps one tackler. Gory White, the last man to stop him on the shoulder and neck area. Oh, wow. Spann. A nice return, and it's good to see him playing for Jackson State. He dropped the ball, but they say uh, the ground can't cause a fumble. Meanwhile, William Arnold takes it up the middle. It's going to be stopped for a short game. You know, this this frightens me when the cheerleaders, <laughs> they stack up like that. That frightens me. They don't have a net under. <laughs> but they're trained and they're skilled and they can do it. There you go. They spend a lot of time preparing, just as the bands and the, and the players do. 
Second down and five for Jackson State. Asbury with the pass. A little bit too tall for Mark Walker. Defending on the play for Alcorn is Dupree McGee out of Rosedale, Mississippi. And uh, as they still try to stack it up. The pyramid. Are we going to get there? <laughs> oh, Jackson State may retaliate. Put a little stack of their own. By the way, that's the lovely daughter of JSU baseball coach Bob Braddy. The Braddies. <laughs> Boy, you talk about tradition running deep there. His son played baseball for the Tigers. Bob is a JSU Hall of Famer. He'll be bringing Tommy Lasorda in next week. <laughs> Asbury to throw. The catch is almost made by Mark Walker, knocked down by Dupree McGee. He's played a nice game in this second half. Jackson State with fourth down couldn't do anything with that nice field position that was presented to them by Gregory Spann. Will the Tigers go for it here, Clay? Looks like they will. Well, we're facing the fourth and six here is Asbury. Cannot complete the football. And the Tigers look like they're going to punt it away inside the uh, Braves 50-yard line. Yeah, Big Daddy will punt it away, and uh, instead of going for it, Cedric Dunbar, as we mentioned earlier, Dunbar, his entire family attended Alcorn. He decided to come to Jackson State, and they may have caused a rip. The Tigers fake it. That's Mo Hampton, but he will not get the first down. Brian Mix sniffed it out. Well, Mix is pumped. You know, when we talked to him on campus earlier this week, he talked about how much this game means to him. And, yeah, he was a Tiger at one time, but he's true. He's a Brave. And the Braves snuff the uh, fake punt attempt. We have a delay before the ball was snapped. Five yards from the previous spot, still fourth down. Meanwhile, Jackson State was flagged for a delay of game penalty. Big Daddy obviously upset. They have to run the uh, fourth down over. Still 2:58 left in the third quarter. We've had a mere three. We've had a mere three points scored here today, in the, at least in the second half. And say hello to your mom, Rob. Hi, mom. <laughs> I hope she's watching. <laughs> oh, you know she is. She, you're a hero. Oh my goodness. I don't know about all of that. It, it, what did you say? You can't do any wrong with mom's telling it, right? <laughs> well, I know mom is pulling for Jackson State. She sent the whole family to Jackson State, so I know she's rooting for the Tigers here tonight. Mom has a vested interest in the outcome. <laughs> JSU down by 10. This is the Capital City Classic. We're inviting you to tune in tomorrow night for a sports journal on WLBT at 10:15. Our guests will include Tommy Luke, the former Ole Miss quarterback, and Tony Shell, the Mississippi State quarterback, as we preview the Egg Bowl and all the ramifications. Ole Miss uh, hammered with NCAA sanctions earlier this week, and you have to wonder how that will play into the game and the fate of Joe Lee Dunn and on and on. We'll also recap this very exciting ball game, a, a low-scoring one in the second half. Exactly. Another flag on the play as Dunbar gets off the kick. So now this second quarter is being littered with flags. Uh, looks like a Chinese laundromat. Somebody needs to pick up the hankies <laughs> and take them home. Let's play some football. There's McNair, obviously not 100% in the second half. He slightly pulled his hamstring. He had that problem catch last year. I need a catch he sure did, yeah, and it hampered him much of the way. In fact, uh, when you have a hamstring injury like he has, it's something that nags you like the Hinton injury. You have to just stay off it for several weeks before it can heal itself. And uh, he practiced very little late in late in the season last year and probably will do the same if Alcorn wins here and makes the playoffs. Uh, I can see him laying off three, four days before taking a few snaps. Flag was called on Jackson State, illegal motion. And the Tigers will have to kick it away again. Well, there's 2.47 left. I mean, I don't guess you start talking about the time, but uh, Alcorn did get three, and the lead is now 10, so it does take two scores for JSU to at least tie or take the lead. And now you think about that uh, field goal. JSU may have tried in the first half, and they're down by 10. There's the punt by Dunbar. Glory White signals for the fair catch, and the catch is made at the 25-yard line. So the Braves will operate from the 25-yard line. Steve McNair again coming on. You mentioned Marcus Hinton play. Uh, entering this season, he was a definite pro prospect, 6'6", uh, 230 pounds, one of the leading receivers for Alcorn. He got injured, and he's been silent ever since. And you wonder if that plays a part in 
him getting drafted. Well, he's hopeful that uh, a layoff of at least three or four weeks will get his leg well, and he can perform uh, January 14th in the Senior Bowl with McNair and make an impact there. The Pro Scouts know what he can do when he's healthy. Hopefully they won't hold this against him. Braves will operate from the 25-yard line. McNair in the shotgun, and he'll wrap it around and hand it off to Tony Bullock. Bullock goes up the middle to about the 33-yard line. Short of the first down, second down at about four. That kind of play designed to slow down that rush a little bit because JSU is pinning those ears back and just uh, coming with all they got. They've blitzed a little bit, and uh, they've, they've harassed McNair a little bit in the second half, and uh, that is to keep them honest. Keep them at home. Stay there. And in the same, at, the, at the same time, keep the clock moving. McNair, back to pass. As a man, it's Bullock again. Bullock down to about the 40-yard line, and that's a first down. On the tackle for Jackson State was Andre Taylor at Picasso Nelson, Bo Lewis, and a host of Tigers. Steve McNair, is this his final collegiate game in Mississippi? It's yet to be determined. Do you think the uh, should Alcorn win, they would give Alcorn a, a home field advantage or home berth in the playoffs? Well, you'd think as well as they've drawn this year, that might be the case. But when you're the 16th best team, you do have to play number one and one might outdraw you there. Meanwhile, the pass was incomplete to Tony Bullock. They'll bring up a second down and 10 for Alcorn State. When you watch for McNair and he comes to the line and he does the hand signal, sometimes, as we're told, that's, uh, that's a decoy, like a third base coach. He'll rip off uh, 10, 15 signs, and you're waiting for one. He may not even show you one. It may just be to give the defense something to think about. <laughs> and there he goes again with the signals as the ball is resting on the 40-yard line. Oh, JSU almost flagged for offsides, but he got back. There's a quick toss to Tim McNair, and he stretches it out, and he may have gotten the first down, and he did. Smart play by Tim McNair. Heads up, heads up as he went out of bounds, stuck that football out an extra couple of feet, and they're moving the chains, and this is the kind of game Alcorn wants to play the rest of the way. A little ball control drive, milk the clock, get some points, and salt it away. And you know, Tim McNair, he had what doctors said was a career-ending injury in high school, but he came back, and and uh, Alcorn gave him a second chance to play, and he's playing, and he's playing well. First and 10 for the Braves. Another pitch off or handoff to Tony Bullock. Bullock is stopped immediately by Jackson State after about a gain of two. Darrell Jones on the tackle out of Murrah High School. A lot of local guys on both these teams today. There's a look at the sonic boom of the South marching band performed nationwide been all on national television. One of the best marching bands in the land. Minute seven to play. McNair calling the signals. The ball is at Jackson State's 47 yard line. McNair the shotgun. Looking, looking, plenty of time, still time. McNair throws. Pass is incomplete intended for Tim McNair. Steve's really content to stay in the pocket now. Uh, doesn't want to be pressed into running for his life or trying to make something happen, just hanging in the pocket, staying with his blockers and hoping he can hit somebody out of that situation. Third down, eight yards to go for Steve McNair and his Alcorn Braves. Heisman Trophy candidate, Walter Payton candidate. He's all everything. Trips to the left. McNair again, back to pass. Plenty of time. The catch is made by Kobe Jenkins. Jenkins down to the 25. Jenkins and Lewis have quite, quite a duel today. Kobe Jenkins is playing a tremendous game for Alcorn this afternoon and this evening. He and Bo Lewis really jabbing. Jenkins out of Murrah High School here in Jackson. Made a nice catch along the sideline. We have a dead ball. Personal foul. Late hit. First and ten. Back 15 more yards onto that catch. Well, that's frustration. Lewis a little vociferous there, and uh, this gives all corner better uh, first down play here as they march it inside. Looks to be inside the 15-yard line. You know, Jackson State cannot let their emotions get the best of them. Bo Lewis. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, well, I'd call that a nod. 
Yeah, yeah, Picasso know. really came up. Uh, Lewis was just hanging on and, and, and taking him out. And the guy still struggling for yards. Uh, I don't know. But uh, I'm not here to question the officials. I'm here to see the Capital City Class. <laughs> <laughs> First Speak, down and ten. of which. Oh, my goodness. First and ten, ball at the 12-yard line. McNair. He's got a man, Donald Ray Ross. Ross fights his way, touchdown! Oh, what a play by Donald Ray Ross. I thought it was down. It's a touchdown, and Alcorn stretches its lead to 44-28. Donald Ross has made some great catches today, has scored some touchdowns. Boy, he gives Alcorn, uh, you can't say it's insurmountable at this point, but uh, excellent effort here as he catches the football about the seven. He's taken down, and his knee never touches, and he just scoots his way into the end zone. Excellent play. David Takata on to attempt the point after. Snap is down, ball is up. It is good, all court. 45, Jackson State 28, as Air McNair has lifted off at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. Let's go downstairs with Ed Fiddler. Well, guys, uh, you were talking earlier about linebacker Alan Ray Haynes who suffered a broken neck against Mississippi Valley. He joined us on the sideline, and uh, Alan Ray, how are you feeling? Man? I feel good. Uh, I'm, just, I'm glad to be here. And I, I know you're liking the scoreboard about now. Huh? You're liking the scoreboard about now, right? Oh, yeah, it looks nice. It looks real nice. Uh, I'm proud of the team. They're playing well. Uh, emotions are good, and uh, I believe we're going to take it. Good luck on your recovery. Alan Ray Haynes, guys, back to you. Thank you, Eddie. We do wish Alan Ray Haynes the best. I think he hurt his neck in that uh, Mississippi Valley football game. And we really hope, him, really hope that he uh, gets over that and wish him the best. Well, it's just great to see him here the last few weeks. He stayed at home, and uh, obviously his condition has stabilized to the point that he can uh, be up and around, and it's, boy, it's great to see him out. He was the spiritual leader of that defense when he went down, and some other guys have had to come up and they have certainly missed him. They've given up a lot of points and a lot of yards this year, but tonight they've held the Tigers to 28 as we have nearly concluded the third quarter. Steve McNair closing in on 500 yards. There's the kick. It's a short kick. It's handled by Greg Spann at the 15. Spann finds a seam, but he's knocked down at about the 29-yard line, and that's where Jackson State will try to get back in it. You take a look at Steve McNair, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, if not the best, McNair nominated for the Heisman Trophy, also nominated for the Walter Payton Award. More than likely, he will win the Walter Payton Award. The Heisman still up in the air. It sure is. Uh, you, you wonder what some of the other guys did today, Kajana Carter and some of the uh, highly touted players as you look at Kobe Jenkins. He's played well here. First and 10 for Jackson State, Asbury, back to pass, plenty of time, he takes off. Asbury at the 30, but he's gonna be run out of bounds or close to the out of bounds uh, sideline as he picks up about six yards on the play. That's the way you used to wear it. <laughs> That's your hero. <laughs> I'm sure he's a fine young man and the guy's really got his head in the game here as we count down the final seconds of the third quarter. 45-28 is our score in favor of Alcorn State as we approach the all-important fourth quarter. Steve McNair has his sights set on the playoffs. We'll be back to the Capital City Classic after this break on TV3 Sports. Sixty-two thousand five hundred twelve on hand tonight for this Capital City Classic. Jackson State with the football, first and ten at its own 41-yard line. Asbury in the shotgun formation. Two receivers either side. Asbury. Pressure is on. Asbury looking. He'll take it off and he'll eat it. And he runs out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. Well, the full moon is uh, setting over Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium tonight, and you wonder if... Uh, the Tiger hopes are setting as well as the Braves have built a 17-point lead here early fourth quarter. James Carson wondering what he can do to get his offense rolling in the second half. Tigers scored at will in the first half, hadn't been able to score since the second quarter. Asbury in the shotgun again, looking for any time, fires the pass to Mark Walker close to the first down. It's going to depend, uh, well actually, nowhere near the first down. 
It'll bring up about uh, second down and about eight yards to go. JSU in a little hurry up now as Mick seems to be in on every tackle for the Braves. Third down and eight yards to go for Jackson State. The Braves showing a four-man front. There's a snap. Asbury back to pass. Fires a pass. He's got a man. That's Osmer. Osmer still on his feet. He's knocked down at about the 33-yard line of Alcorn State. So JSU on the move as the Tigers use the hurry-up offense. Going with a two-minute drill here at the 14-minute mark. Asbury finds Osmer over the middle, and the Braves converge at the 33. Tigers in a must-point uh, situation now. Need to score. LaShawn Osmer, one of the bright spots for Jackson State. He's an excellent receiver. They're going to call it at the 34-yard line. Asbury under center, and he'll take off with the draw. He loves it. Asbury didn't get many yards on that play. He is up near the 30-yard line. Bring up a second down and about six yards to go for the first down. Asbury playing a huge role for the Tigers this year. The quarterback situation was very unstable in preseason. We wondered who would emerge. It has been Asbury who quarterbacked his team to a dramatic victory in Baton Rouge, his hometown, beating the Southern Jaguars. He needs to rally here tonight. Asbury had the blitz on him. He escapes looking. He's going to get trapped in the backfield, and Asbury will lose about nine yards on the play. Alcorn showing blitz, and they caught Asbury in the back. That's Sidney Middleton who ran him out. Harry Brown, number 44, also in hot pursuit. As Alcorn is showing me some defensive line pursuit and speed there up front. Sidney Middleton, the hair bear. <laughs> Asbury escaped one tackle, but... Couldn't get away from big Sidney Milton. Oh, a WCW takedown there. <laughs> Almost a pin. Third down, 14 yards to go. Ball is on the Alcorn 38-yard line. Braves defense stepping up a notch in the fourth quarter. It's, it is always done. Passes through the hands of Rod Smith. Depending on the play for Alcorn, was Dante Dow actually Calvin Robinson out of Jim Hill? He pulls up a little lame on that play. Special K doing a nice job. We remind you that Jackson State is pointless here in the second half. Have not been able to dent the scoreboard. It's fourth down, 14 yards to go. Jackson State's offense still on the field. So Big Daddy will elect to go for it here on fourth down. What can he do on fourth down that he hadn't done first, second, and third down? Let's see. Smith in motion. Asbury back to pass plenty of time Asbury throws and it's not enough for a first down Smith made the catch but he's knocked down at the 34 yard line Asbury having a word with his receivers Alcorn will take over and another chance to see Steve McNair well Big Daddy's frustrated because on the fourth and 14 you got to throw the ball to the sticks and he just had nobody and that's the frustration beginning to mount here as he uh, hit a guy for a short gain, but uh, on fourth and 14, you got to throw at least to the spot. Steve McNair coming out to lead his team, and as you heard at halftime, the hand me the Heisman rap, Rashawn Salam, can you throw a tight bomb? Eric Zaire is your name, McNair. Martin Luther King had a dream. Terry Dean is the full moon. <laughs> you sound, hey, I'll tell you what, now you may, you may want to take a spot, take those guys' place and do that. <laughs> you sound good doing that. Get McNair, meanwhile, goes deep. He's looking for 6-6, six, six, and he's got it. 6-6 six, six at the 10 five touchdown. 6-6 six, six with the touchdown. All court. Boy, Jackson State out of Memorial Stadium. Steve McNair with the Heisman Cole. Check it out. And in the Heisman play. Well, 6-6. Six, six. He's five inches taller than the man guarding him, Picasso Nelson. You know how badly Marcus wanted to make a play today. His touchdown gives him the all-time career touchdown catch record. McNair over 500 yards now and flashing that Heisman pose one more time. They'll select the Heisman Trophy winner December 10th in New York City at the Downtown Athletic Club. We'll be there. And if, and if it doesn't go to that man, we need to make him one. Steve McNair, truly the best. 
point after, up away, and it's good. All four has scored the most points on Jackson State this season with 51. 51-28 is our score. Jackson State in deep trouble. McNair going downtown once again. This is the home run ball. And Picasso could not make the play, and Hinton limps in. That touchdown surpasses the all-corn career record. As Marcus Hinton just limping down the field, just cannot stretch out like he used to. Excuse me, that's Bo Lewis on the coverage. My apology to Picasso. Hinton makes the play, all-corn on top, 52-28. Oh, my. The stands are starting to filter out. Look exactly. Hand him the Heisman. <laughs> and the roar beginning to uh, be deafening here as the Braves feel they've got this one in their back pocket. Jackson State made two minute mistakes early on, and you can't do that when Steve McNair is on the opposing team. You, you start to think about what NFL team, or which NFL team would draft McNair following his uh, college career. The Jacksonville Jaguars obviously interested. Well, the two franchises, the two, excuse me, the expansion franchises have scouted almost every game for Steve this year. Jacksonville, of course, and the Carolina Panthers, their GM, their head coach has been in. Tom Coughlin, the Jacksonville Jaguars head coach, uh, equally impressed by what Steve could do. You look at the skills, strong arm, quick feet. His running ability is uh, unparalleled for a quarterback. And I guess... Because we know him so well, we've been around him, and we've seen what the other guys can do. You put him on a Division I team. Somebody even conjectured today in the newspaper. Rick Cleveland's column. Troy State coach Larry Blakeney said, if Mississippi State has that young man, they win the national championship. Exactly. Exactly. He is truly a gifted athlete. Well deserving of the Heisman Trophy. Meanwhile, Greg Spann fumbles the kickoff. He picks it up at the five. He's going to be knocked down at about the eight-yard line, and the trouble continues for Jackson State. Lemuel Oliver with the tackle as we take another look at Steve McNair and that strike to Marcus Hinton. McNair's arm is so strong. Oh, right on the money. Right on the money. You can't throw it any better. Even our flag football team at the station uh, can learn a few things from Steve McNair. They can learn a few things from anybody. <laughs> from Bailey Magnet. How about that? Well, and the Tigers look depleted now. As Asbury. Well, actually, it's great of Pratt in the game for Daryl Asbury. The catch is made, but immediately William Arnold is knocked down by Jermaine Brown. Rob, do you think the fact Pratt's in the ball game is the, is the white towel from Jackson State or is Asbury a little shaken up? Well, you know, he came into the game with a broken nose, which uh, was suffered by in the game against Prairie View. So we don't know if that had any effect on it, but uh, maybe Big Daddy thinks that, um, thinks that uh, Asbury has been ineffective. Braylon Pratt now, you see his numbers on the year. Tigers down 52-28. The most points scored on Jackson State's defense all season long. Tigers operating from the 15-yard line. It's third down and four. William Arnold in the backfield. Braylon Pratt throws it. Pass was incomplete. Broken up by Calvin Robinson. Special K, as you call it, Clay. All court starting to tee off now, and you wonder, Rob, Pratt is the future. Asbury is not. He's a senior. Graylin Pratt is a freshman. You wonder if they're playing for next year right now. Now with Alcorn getting the ball back, do you run it up or do you or do you play conservative? Well, Alcorn has never been one to stem the tide. I mean, they're out there to run their offense. And uh, do you leave McNair in the game at this point? I think you take Steve out, rest him for the playoffs. It appears they're in like Flint right now. Nice kick by Cedric Dunbar. He drives White all the way back to the 25. Ball rolls to about the 27-yard line.
11 minutes, 27 seconds to play in this ball game. All court. On the move, 52-28. We'll be back in just a moment. A crowd of 62,512 slowly making their way to the exit as Alcorn has blown this game apart. 52-28 is our score. McNair still in the game for the Braves as they operate from the 27-yard line. McNair still going to the air. That's Kobe Jenkins. Makes a move. Jenkins down to about the 37-yard line. Well, maybe they're playing for points. They're playing for an impressive win over here against their biggest rival. Maybe they need more to uh, really jam this point, shove this point home about the playoff berth, and maybe that's why he's still in there. And two, he's still in the Heisman race. He certainly is. And you know, this is his last game of the regular season, and he wants to put up as many numbers as he can. Look at his numbers on the day, Clint, or on the season. Came in with 16,000 yards in total offense, as we pointed out at the top of the broadcast. That's nine miles, nine miles of offense for Steve McNair over his four-year career in Lorman. He is truly going to gift to Alcorn State University to swag football and He's going to certainly be missed when the uh, horn says "wah." <laughs> and the thing you <laughs> and the thing you notice about him right away, the first interview you might do is uh, you see him filing out here. He's he's truly humble on and off the camera. He is. Uh, Takes everything in stride. He's never lauded this over his teammates like I'm the guy. Uh, you, you just don't hear that kind of jealousy, which you do hear at some other places. Alcorn has the ball. Second down, one yard to go. The ball is resting on the 37-yard line. McNair with trips to the left. Actually, trips to the right. One receiver to the left, namely Kobe Jenkins. McNair will take this one under center. JSU had uh, plenty of chances as the handoff goes to Tony Fullock. Fullock is stopped close to the first down. May have gotten it. Fullock's going to be hungry after this one. He has played a uh, an all-day affair. We're approaching four hours on this classic. Both teams like to throw the football. 10 minutes, 41 seconds to play in the game. Crowd definitely down from when it started. That's the blue crowd, not the purple crowd. The blue crowd. The purple crowd is still intact. We're going to take a measurement here. <laughs> a couple of Braves had to do the jump rope from the chain game. Gonna be close to his first down, and they got it. First down for all four state. Braves uh, are talking about winning a national title. Still have hopes of winning that title if they make it to the playoffs. First uh, game loss to Grambling. McNair had a pass dropped in the end zone by. Percy Singleton, which uh, ultimately lost that game, but today McNair is on the money. McNair rushes on. Smart play to get the ball away. Pass intended for Sharon Harness, but McNair actually just trying to get out of trouble. Did you see that left hamstring uh, taped up? And perhaps it's time now to credit that offensive line as we've done from time to time over the year. Michael Ellis and all the guys up front, George Graham, as they protected Steve. And granted, he's taken the ball in the shotgun uh, much of the year, but they uh, they take it personally if Mr. McNair gets seated on his uh, derriere. So uh, he's, he's, uh, he's protected better than Lloyds of London. McNair gets away from trouble. Pass is picked off by Quincy Coleman. Steve McNair had all kind of pressure on him. Tried to get that pass to the outside, near sideline to Kobe Jenkins, but it was picked off. And Jackson State still with a glimmer of hope in this ballgame. Well, he threw it going down. He threw it in the area, but uh, 
Jenkins couldn't get it, and the Tigers did. Daryl Jones with the sack. And you can see McNair is not as mobile as he has been in the first half, uh, hampered by that hamstring, which allowed uh, Daryl Jones to come in and put the pressure on. So Jackson State with the ball at the 44-yard line. Tigers need to score quickly in order to get back in this one. Graylin Pratt fires it. The catch is made down to the 30-yard line. That's Jerome Young. Dupree McGee on the stop. That ball was deflected before uh, Span uh, eventually hauled it in. Come on, Brown! JSU moving the football now. Graylin Pratt, a freshman quarterback, 6'1", 190 out of Graham Rapids, Michigan, and he's the future for the Tigers. And he goes to the end zone looking for Span. There's a flag on the play, and it's going to be against Alcorn. Dante Dowers interfered with Span catching that football. So Jackson State now in good shape here. He didn't interfere. He mugged him. <laughs> he shoved off about the two and buried uh, the intended receiver. Now, it may be against Jackson State. The Braves are, are rejoicing here. Oh, the infamous wave the flag off. <laughs> In, inadvertent flag. <laughs> We didn't oh. mean to. Oh, my goodness. And hey, you know that will get Big Daddy's go. Take a look at McNair and his offensive coordinator, Ricky Taylor. McNair has a lot of respect for Taylor, and Taylor, a lot of respect for McNair. Ball at the 30-yard line of Alcorn. Jackson State, second and 10. Pratt with the pressure. Flips it out to Walker. Walker at the 25-20. Plenty of room. Walker may take it in, and he does. It's a touchdown. Touchdown, Jackson State. Mark Walker's pass from Graylin Pratt. Jackson State now had to score quickly, and the Tigers did. That's freshman to freshman, Graylin Pratt to uh, Mark Walker. He's also a rookie out of Memphis. 5'10", 172, and says, hey, let's don't quit. 9.48 to play. The Tigers have tightened it up just a bit with this point after. It's back to a 17-point lead for the Braves. 52-34, and the thing is, can Jackson State's defense stop all corn? Have done it in spots. The Tigers will go for two. Pratt to the end zone. I don't know who he was throwing that to. Maybe one of the photographers in the back. Nevertheless, all corns, or uh, rather Jackson State's two-point conversion is no good. All corns lead 52 to 34 over Jackson State. This is the Capital City Classic on TV3. A full moon has fallen on Jackson State, or has written. What is? It? Look at that. I tell you what, the full moon, bring it out. <laughs> All corn rejoicing. Reveling in the moment. Glory White feels the kick at the 15. White up the middle. White almost let go of the football, but he did not. And All Corn will bring it out to the 32-yard line. Steve McNair will once again go back into the football game. Gets instructions from offensive coordinator Ricky Taylor. Cardell Jones has to be loving this one. Once an assistant at Jackson State, now the head man at Alcorn State. And since his arrival, he said he will field a team that will play 60 minutes. And he has done just that since taking over at Alcorn State. Well, three members of his staff also Jackson State graduates. His sons played at JSU. But Alcorn uh, was his home. Jerron Harness now with the handoff. He tries to take it to the outside, but he's going to be knocked down after about a yard gain. McNair, 531 yards on the day. Three interceptions. Still over 50% as he gives the Harness off the right side. Braves want to keep this clock moving with 9-16 to play in the football game. The Braves nursing an 18-point lead. Ball at the 33-yard line. McNair with two backs in the backfield. One receiver either side. McNair under center. 
the handoff. Second man through. That's her own Harness. Harness fights his way to the 35-yard line. That'll bring up a second down. And about six yards to go. You wonder just how injured McNair is. He hadn't uh, scrambled as much in the second half, hadn't taken off and run with the football like he did in the first half. Third down for Alcorn, third down and about six to go for first down. Ball at the 36-yard line. High formation for the Braves. McNair fakes the handoff. Looking, plenty of time. He goes deep. He's got a man. That's Donald Ray Ross, but he stopped running again. Ross stopped running. McNair had it on the money, but uh, the pass was incomplete, and that'll bring up a fourth down for Alcorn State. Depending on that play for Jackson State was Derek Bo Lewis. McNair trying to go deep once again as he hides that football supremely. Cameras take the fake. <laughs> but we got the end zone. As Donald Ray pulled up a little short, maybe. Tried to cut in front of Bo Lewis for the reception. I think the Alcorn defense won this game in the second half because McNair went into the halftime. We were uncertain about his status, and yet they held the Tigers without a score until early in the fourth quarter when Alcorn had already stretched his lead. And look at this. Osmer lets the punt roll, and it goes down to the nine-yard line. That's where Glory White downs the football, and that's where Jackson State will take it. Take a look at the lovely Francine J. Setts from Jackson State. Dr. Jimmy James. He visited with us in the booth early, gave us his game plan on what he was going to show us. And congratulations to, uh, to he and all the uh, his associates with the band. And there's his uh, Steve's career numbers. He's closing in on 17,000, Rob. Incredible. He is magnificent. <laughs> Jackson stayed with it at uh, its own 11-yard line. The handoff to William Arnold. Can't find anything up the middle. Takes it a little bit outside, and he'll be stopped at about the 20-yard line. Seven minutes, 44 seconds to go in the season for Jackson State and in the regular season college career of Steve McNair. James Carson. Can't feel bad uh, about this game. He's had a tremendous season. No one picked him to get this far. As Arnold takes it up the middle to about the 25, he'll take it. Uh, actually, he'll get the first down, and Arnold seems to be hurt. William Arnold has put his name into the record books with uh, JSU greats Walter Payton and Lewis Tillman. Both, uh, of course, Walter, the NFL's all-time leading rusher, Lewis Tillman. Very productive now in the National Football League for the Chicago Bears. Began his career with the Giants. And William Arnold is the third JSU back to go back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. He's got 136 on the day. Little consolation. We have illegal participation on the uh, defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Had a flag against all for an illegal participation. Oh, look at that. Isn't she sweet? Hey, cutie. <laughs> She's got to be a Jackson State fan. No She's, smiles on that face. She might be an Alcorn fan. She says, JSU, go to sleep. It's over. <laughs> First down and 10 for Jackson State at its own 36-yard line. Braylon Pratt in for Daryl Asbury. Mo Hampton in the backfield. He'll catch the pass and... Hampton will be knocked down at about the 39-yard line. Hampton out of Murrah High School, stopped by, who else? Brian Mix. Brian Mix has, has put been, Jackson State in the mix tonight. Boy, he has. He's been a player today, no question about it. And they're dancing in the aisles. All corn makes it four straight, dare I say it, with seven minutes to play. Over the Tigers, if they can salt this one away. Braylon Pratt, plenty of time to pass, looking. He'll take it, take off on his own, and Pratt will be knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line, and that's enough for a first down. Chased out by Mix. 
And Marcus Colley, they call him Spit, the junior DB from Moss Point, Marcus Colley. I'll tell you what, that mix has certainly played a great game. He's been anxious to play Jackson State. He didn't play last season because of an injury, and he is playing well today. Yeah, I think he's your defensive MVP. Jackson State with the football first and 10 at its own 47. Pratt again back to pass. Pratt looking, looking, throws across the middle to Greg Spann. And Spann is wrestled down by Dante Dowers. His name has been called throughout this ball game. You talk about Steve McNair in this ball game and his pro chances. We must talk about uh, Greg Spann and his chances. Pro scouts love Greg Spann. And uh, it's going to be curious, or we'll be curious to find out how he'll do in the pros. Oh, Brett is sacked on the blitz. That's downtown Harry Brown doing it from his linebacking position, a running back for much of his career at Alcorn, and he stepped up big here in the place of Alan Ray Haynes downtown. I said, to Coach, he can't go over 180. He said, oh, no, no, we've been feeding him. He's up to 205. <laughs> He's quick. He really gets to the play. They said he liked uh, Harry Brown on defense because of his speed. Alcorn needed, a, needed more speed on defense, and they got it with Harry Brown. Second down, 15 to go, ball on the 35. Pratt throws it out to Mark Walker. Walker slips a tackle. Walker still in his feet. Walker at the 15, or actually 25 inside the 25-yard line to about the 18. Five minutes, 41 seconds to play. Jackson State using up a lot of clock on this drive, which uh, is their worst enemy right now. Mark Walker, Jackson State. He's a freshman out of Memphis, Tennessee. And he's played well this season for Jackson State. He'll be back next year in the old blue and white. JSU on the move, third down, two yards to go for the first down. The fake handoff to Mo Hampton. Pratt has his pass picked off. All four, a lot of room to run. That's Marcus Cully. Cully is down at the 20-yard line, and I think you can shut the door on this one, Clay. Well, you can spit on the Tigers because uh, Marcus Cully, they call him Spit, has made the play. Five minutes left. JSU down 18, and it's beginning to uh, dawn on Big Daddy that this one is not going to go in the W column. Steve McNair grinning. McNair with a smile on his face. He loves to beat Jackson State, as does all the Alcorn football players. This is a big, big rivalry. A lot of talk before this ball game, but Steve McNair has quieted down this, this crowd and has quieted down Jackson State University. McNair still in the game for Alcorn. The Braves will operate from their own 20-yard line. Two backs in the backfield. McNair hands it off to Hardis. Hardis about two yards, bringing up a second down and eight. Steve McNair. In the opening, we showed you McNair in a Superman outfit, and he has been nothing short of that today. All corn, 622 yards on the afternoon. That's a third of a mile right there. 16th-ranked Alcorn, sure to move up in the Division I AA football poll. Sure to make it to the playoffs. Who will the Braves face? Speculation has it. Youngstown State. And we'll tell you about it tomorrow night on Sports Journal. Those bids go out tomorrow afternoon. Meanwhile, the Braves gives Dimitri Holbert a low playing time as we go inside four minutes. In this ball game, first down for the Braves. Steve McNair, none can compare. He's got a rap song, getting close to a video. He's the big man on campus at Alton. Well, and just hordes and hordes of media nationwide have descended on Alcorn State University this year to, to see the kid that they've talked about, the one they call Air. And McNair will take a timeout, and we will also. 3.41 to play in this ball game. Jackson State trails Alcorn 52-34. to 34.
Captain Alcorn here at Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium, Captain McNair. <laughs> and Chief Photographer Jimmy Duncan has him in his sights at the 15. That young man who has given us such good food on our trips to Alcorn. He performed this year at the uh, first sports journal we had at the Iron Horse and uh, reminding our viewers to stay tuned for the uh, network programming. And He's fired up. Four in a row for the Braves. Second down for Alcorn, second and 10. After that, uh, no gain on first down. McNair under center, two backs in the backfield. Dimitri Holbert. In the high formation, Holbert with the handoff. Holbert takes it across the left side, knocked down by Picasso Nelson. Still nowhere near the first down. Rob, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the people who make us look good. Uh, Chief Executive Officer Frank Melton, our General Manager Dan Modisett, and all the camera people, the technicians, the engineers who've worked uh, most of the week preparing us for this broadcast. It takes I've, a team effort. And that's what we got at TV3. And I know one cameraman in particular with us, uh, Don Spann, is elated over this victory <laughs> by Alcorn. <laughs> Big Alcorn fan. Third down and four for the Braves. Ball at the 42-yard line. McNair hands it off. That's Holbert with the carry. Holbert close to the first down, but he'll be a little short. Take a look at the all-corn flag girls. Doing their job well here at uh, the Capital City Classic. A minute 51 seconds to go. Jackson State uh, should hold uh, its head down. They've had a tremendous season. As we mentioned, pick to finish next to Prairie View in the swag, but the Tigers are going to finish near the top of the uh, conference. Third place, it appears. As all corn looks like they'll uh, salt away an 18 point win. A dejected Jackson, Jackson State uh, sidelines. Tigers really felt they could come in here and beat Alcorn in this ball game, But that was not to be. As so many have thought, facing Steve McNair, that's the ultimate test. And I would venture to say we'll not see one like him in many years. Steve McNair setting more records, breaking more records. As you see him getting congratulatory Hugs from his teammates. A minute 16 to play in tonight's ball game. We'd like to thank you for joining us. This has truly been a truly been a memorable moment for myself. Being a graduate of Jackson State and you a graduate of Alcorn. That's <laughs> right. <kidding>. Hey, <laughs> tremendous uh, thrill doing this game to, to say many years from now that we did a live broadcast. Steve McNair, perhaps a, a Heisman Trophy winner. We shall see. So many skeptics out there say he plays a small college football. Our Ed Fiddler has the franchise in his sights. Eddie? Yes, indeed. We have the man here. Steve, it looked like your mobility was slowed a little bit by your hamstring in the second half. Well, yes, uh, I pulled it going into the, uh, later in the second uh, quarter. Uh, you know, it just slowed me down a little bit. When I ain't got my wheels, you know, it's kind of uh, cutting my momentum down of running and passing. So I strictly had to go to passing. Uh, but the offensive line did a great job giving protection. The receiver did an extra job getting home. So, uh, you know, when you have that coordination, you know, you get uh, those big numbers we put up today. You didn't hurt your Heisman chances. What a job by the Alcorn defense held the Tigers to one touchdown in the second half. Oh, yes. Uh, defense came alive. You know, they, we know they're going to play a big part in our win today, and they came up, and they stepped up to another level. And uh, your thoughts on the playoffs? You think you're in? Well, we in. You know, I'm glad to be in, and uh, we just got to work hard and do a little better and minimize our mistakes uh, in order to win against a good uh, team as we go play in the playoffs. Thanks a lot, Steve, and good luck to you. Play Rob, back to you. Steve McNair, what more can you say about this tremendous athlete, this tremendous quarterback playing in Division I AA? Like Clay mentioned, a lot of people uh, uh, looking at him playing in the Division I AA won't uh, vote for him for the Heisman Trophy, but uh, like uh, the coach of Troy State mentioned last week, uh, these teams, uh, these voters played against him, defended against him, coached against him. He would be well-deserving of the Heisman Trophy. Mom on the sidelines with... Uh 
Superman, the Cape Man, Rashawn Salam, can you throw a tight bomb? Eric Zaire is your name, McNair. Martin Luther King had a dream, Terry Dean. <laughs> He'd make me want to do a little uh, beatboxing when you do that. <laughs> it's autograph time. Autograph time, and it's time to wrap this one in purple and gold. Draylon Pratt gets that. All course defense playing tremendous here in this ball game, only allowing Jackson State 34 points, while they put up 52 points from a from a very talented offensive unit. 47 seconds to play in this one. We have face mask on the defense, five yards, still second down. All for flag for face masking. Well, I wish I was his agent <laughs> because <laughs> who does? You know, I heard that uh, agents call McNair so often and uh, he, he has to take his uh, dormitory telephone off the hook because guys are calling and people are calling him all times of the day and all times of the night. And uh, so he, he gets no rest. Well, you know, Cardell ran off a few agents earlier this year from the practice field. Hey, don't mess with my player. <laughs> don't ruin his future. As we wind it down here, 35 seconds left. 35 seconds to play. Steve McNair has come into Memorial Stadium and taken his home crowd, taken his home field from Jackson State. This is the inaugural Capital City Classic game moved from Lorman, Mississippi to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium, trying to rival the Bayou Classic featuring Grambling and Southern University. 30 seconds and counting, and I tell you, you can't do any better than the full house and local television. This one is about over as Alcorn is going to wrap up its fourth straight win over those blood rival Tigers. Alcorn will move to 8-2-1 and one on the season and a possible playoff spot more than likely will get a playoff spot. There you see Asbury dejected, but he has played a tremendous season, had a tremendous season for Jackson State. Uh, no one thought he would be as good as you see the pass was intercepted, but Jackson State uh, can take uh, pride in knowing that the Tigers didn't finish in last place. They did finish close to the top. I wonder what mom was telling Steve there. Just a little uh, motherly advice. Uh, be humble, son. Be humble. Well, I don't think she has to tell him that. He, he is always that and more. Steve McNair playing his final regular season game in Mississippi. And it's been a pleasure to watch McNair run and throw during his career at Alcorn State University. Andre Credit will come into the game to run out the clock, hopefully. <laughs> he came in in the second quarter and almost caused a disaster for the Braves. He'll get his name in the newspapers, that's for sure. <laughs> but he's uh, he'll be a guy who... Uh, Probably back up uh, Jerry Fletcher next year for Alcorn as the Braves look to the future, but uh, still a great run ahead of them. We'll find out at 2.30 tomorrow. The Braves are in the playoffs. The clock winds down. Alcorn will win it 52-34. Steve McNair, another tremendous ball game. And Alcorn with bragging rights, but more importantly, Alcorn continues to play. Jackson State season is over. Another record falls for Steve McNair as they file out of Memorial Stadium. Alcorn has defeated rival Jackson State 52-34. It's all over but the shouting. <laughs> so... The Capital City Classic comes to an end. Alcorn wins. We'll make the playoffs, apparently. It's been an honor bringing you this game this afternoon. I'm Rob Jay, along with Clay Hall. Clay, any last words? Well, I'm going to put this in my video scrapbook, that's for sure, and I'll see you tomorrow night on Sports Journal. Thank you. <laughs>
Civics with only 13 points in the third quarter, outscored 25-13. Well, perhaps this is where Pat Riley wanted his ball club to be. They, they may feel they have the paces where they want it because the Knicks have been a very powerful fourth quarter ball club. Reggie Miller back in, not able to hit. And on the follow, a foul is called as Antonio Davis attempted the putback. It's on Anthony Bonner. Well, of course, the Knicks over the course of the year and in the playoffs.